About territory time, OG fam with you. AJ's back. Kratz is there. I was in Vegas last show with with uh, Kipnis and, and Brockstar. We missed you guys. No, I listened. You didn't. I didn't listen. No, I did. I listened. No, you. What didn't. do you mean? I didn't listen. I listened to the show. Yeah, you're no, saying you didn't. you didn't miss him. You didn't miss us because oh, I heard the intro. Oh, I heard the intro. Heard so fuck off, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kratz, don't try to lie to me because Kratz didn't listen, but I did. What did I say, Kratz? I don't remember. He didn't listen. Exactly. Yeah, I listened. Same. Well, good. We have one fan. <laughs> He's sitting next to yeah. me. <laughs> Our viewership goes down today now. Yeah, that's that sucks. Right. So it was a fun weekend. Hanging out with Kip on Saturday. We play the BetMGM Poker Championship. And we're like, ah, you know, we'll have some fun with it. See how it goes. Six, seven hours later, mm -mm. I got I'm bounced. Out. I'm out. Kip probably. So he went through the first full day, which is at least 10. The second day, just about to the end. So he probably hours? did about 20 hours of poker. 10 hours three days sitting in the same chair playing golf. Well, no, you get breaks. You can stand. You can move around. It's not like they pin you down here. Look at this dude's game face. This is a pro in the making. A star was born this past weekend in Vegas at the Aria. You can see Jason Fold. Kipnis doing Keep work. Plug. Fold. Dude next to me knocked me out. I had pocket queens. He saw him. You didn't hide your hand good enough. You think so? That's what I saw in video. Well, <laughs> your biceps were too yeah, bulging. But... You couldn't get them. You couldn't get your biceps to get the cards in tight enough. Okay, but free flop. I have pocket queens. He has ace king. You're going in? Of course I'm going in. With ace king? Over pocket queens? Oh, how did he know you had pocket queens? You said he saw my cards. He, he knew there was a king coming. No, he didn't see He's the like plot. Rain Man. He's like Rain he didn't Man. see the plot. <laughs> uh, but it was awesome. So He's like the guy in uh, Austin Powers, the little eye patch. Ooh, number two. I <laughs> see the cards. So there, there it is. What a day. Six hours in, gaining steam, bounce on pocket queens, A++ event. And then that was me wishing good luck to Kip on the floor who went – Almost the entire second day. And most importantly, I'm burying the lead here, finished in the money. That's impressive. Dude, no chance. Don't ever don't ask me. I'm out six hands. I didn't ask you. I know, but I'm saying six hands, Kratzy. Uh uh. I, I'm like, hey, about, all in. I don't even care what I have. I just want to be, I, no, I'm bored. I have two things. How about congrats, Kip? Congrats, Kip. Yes. Like, that Way to go. Really impressive. He's awesome. playing with pros at no, the no, no, table. No. Congrats. Two Seriously. dudes make millions of dollars playing. And Kip's like, yeah, I mess around with my friends and play some poker. Said, well, that'll do it, folks. Finally got eliminated. Had ace-king, all in verse, an ace-queen. Guy hits queen on the river. Not going to let that crap you beat spoil an amazing experience. Gained a ton of respect for these guys and their craft. Now what to do in the city with my money? Congrats. He had an extra night on me. But, yeah, just very impressive performance. Kratzy, especially given that, you know, Friday started with a scramble where we couldn't even find each other. We're in different hotels. And Kip had his brain working. I will say that. He definitely did. You looked pretty bored. He looked what? locked in at the, your, your, your video there. You looked pretty bored. You were kind no, of. No, that was my poker face. That was my poker uh, face. That's my, I'm going to act like I'm sleeping, but I really have pocket but, queens to lose on. I would love to see, I would love to play. <laughs> We, we should play at some point, though, with our group, because then we can make it a little quicker, because I'd, I'd like to hear AJ's commentary. For example, each of I'll, our tables I'm all in. I'm had, all in. each of our tables had a had a stare. Right. So they they try and read you like my, I had one at mine and Kip had one at his. And if you're heads up or just in the same um, game as them, this is them while they're waiting for you staring right into your eyes. So I would look mm -hmm. away and, and just kind of nonchalantly you know look at the flop and hang out he read you he read you he he already no he it. didn't that dude didn't knock me out I'm number two read to touch me he, he had the number two him. number two had had something else to him but anyway it was fun it was good times all right let's uh first off guest wise let you know that ryan helsley um super reliever with the cardinals joining us in about 
15 minutes. Tommy Canely, who's back. I'm loving what I'm seeing on the mound from Tommy back with the Yanks. And Rachel Balkovic. Can he hit for the Yankees? Oof. We'll ask him. I know who can. Who? Aaron Judge. Well, he ain't playing. <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I don't – did Rizzo, because I was flying late last night, did Rizzo get a hit? I he had, uh, I'm not going to lie. I was watching college baseball. I know. We'll get to that So too. much fun. I – he hadn't had a hit, and Rizzo had a good start to the season since Judge went down, which was like a week ago. We can look real quick. There's yeah, a, there's this new John Star- John Sterling got him. hit before Rizzo did. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so oh. true. Sterling took a hit and then kept going, so he's a champ. But, well, he didn't see it coming. I, I don't believe that. No, he said he said he didn't realize how close it was. So he, he thought it was going to land well short, and it hit it hit him, and not he goes, "Ow!" That was my favorite. Let's see your reaction right time on, when you're right in your eighties, dude. You, saw, I sent you guys the tape of me sticking a ball in front of Hawk Harrelson's face and saving his you're, life. You're in your forties. John Sterling's eighty-four years old. No excuses. No, don't do that. Come AJ. on, don't stop it. I'm, John's a great. Relax. John's awesome. I know. John's <laughs> a great relax. You know, you know, relax. And then Rachel Balkovec is going to join us in about an hour. Do we have her? She's ever in the Yankees organization. Uh, I think a future manager or GM. You can ask her anything. She has been hit by a baseball during the Futures game. Oh, when I was calling it two or three years ago, it was early on in the game, first or second inning, smoked by a foul ball like on on her leg somewhere, and had the same face as me at the poker table, like nothing. Nonchalant, didn't feel a thing. What she's are we doing boss. here? Yeah, she's, a she's boss. an absolute. By the way, Rizzo did not have a hit. So I don't think he has a hit since Judge went down. There was a quote, He's and I couldn't tell three. if it was a joke or not. I think it was like John Heyman who said, uh, anonymous, I think he said anonymous Yankee quote. Who goes, maybe Judge shouldn't have run into that wall <laughs> and made that catch as sick as that catch was. Sucks to lose him for a while. Just yeah, saying. Now they're fixing the wall in Dodger Stadium. They're I know that. It. Why? Why is there exposed concrete on any walls? It's twenty twenty three. What happened? Who cares? We why, don't need why exposed did concrete. That, why did they have that electrical you know I mean? box in in uh, Comiskey with? Uh... No, that's different. It's not called Comiskey. You You're talking I mean. about when they were cheating, like like a hundred years ago. No, no, no. The dude the slid in and hurt his knee. The Yankee guy. His first game. What was the outfielder guy? Yeah, the Yankees prospect that went to the A's and it. You know, his knee. Oh. Really yeah. I forget what his name is. But he slid in his first big league game. Black broke his knee. Yes. Missed the rest of the year and never was the same. Terrible. Outfielder, right fielder guy. Fast guy. <sighs> what is I his know name? who you're talking about. I'll get the names. I'll, it, it's – I can't get it right now. All right, let's 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 jump into it, shall we? Let's charge the damn mound. And, and by the way, we're going to get into John Heyman in a little bit. So pay attention. There's a lot of things we just said we're going to get into. There's no way we're it's getting into be, all of them. It's going to be quick and loud. Good luck to never. us. Never. <laughs> Weekend standings moves. The Arizona Diamondbacks are now three and a half games clear of the Dodgers. And breaking news, that was Dustin Fowler. Yes. Dustin Fowler. Thanks, thank Mark. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good call. So Texas is five games clear of the Astros, which I believe was the case on Friday. Baltimore, five and a half games back of Tampa Bay. Yanks are nine and a half games back of Tampa Bay. And this one's got to be my favorite. And this is really where I wanted to lead off the show. Because I know I've been covering the hard-hitting news with the Oakland A's and the Vegas situation. But also, when a team makes noise on the field, I'm going to give them love. They swept the Brewers. They've won how many for the podcast crowd? Five. Five, Five in, a in a row for and Oakland. The best thing I've seen all year is Jay Kuda, who always puts out these weird random stats. Mm-hmm. Teams with losing records in Oakland this year. He had Oakland and the Braves because they beat the Braves two out of three. And the rest of the league was had the winning record in Oakland, <laughs> and it was the Braves in Oakland had losing record. Every other team had a winning record. I love so, that. Yeah. I love that gif or picture, or whatever that graph that he always puts out. I agree. Keep that content coming. Uh, uh, listen, good for the Oakland A's. And by the way, Kratz is Kansas City Royals. They're one game ahead of the Oakland A's, and everyone's top bashing the A's. The Royals have won. No, they've won eighteen. The Royals have won. Or the A's have won seventeen. That's one game. They're a junior. Yeah, but Oakland seventeen and fifty. Casey, you're saying in the I'm win going column. about win column. win column. Okay. I mean, who's the worst team? Kansas City or Oakland? I'm Everyone would say Oakland. They're only one win separated. I'm covering you in case the trolls come after. <laughs> Bring Oakland's it, troll. get, Oakland's care. getting hot. Fucking wins. 
<laughs> it, Oakland is hot. Forget getting hot. They're hot as they're going to be all year. Their run differential is definitely showing me that they're going to s- not stay hot. <laughs> <laughs> Play uh, somebody today. Uh the Rays, I think, I think they play the Rays. Today. I know who they want to play. Anyone in the National League Central, because yeah. those five wins are all against that division. True. Or the Braves. They play the Rays today. Go get them. Remember the Rays early on this season? They gave it to them. Oh, they're about to give it to them in Oakland this time, I think. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> but it was a fun run. Now they're paying attention oh, to you again. Yes, right. Saturday was 2-1. Wait, was Saturday? Which day? When was the uh, sell? Was that this weekend? What? Or what? Oh, they were on the road. They were on the road. No, they, Tuesday. they were on the road. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday. When is the cell? Oh, the big when is that? Anti-protest. You would have saw it. You, I, you know, just, I know. I knew it's it was, I, I just knew it was it's coming tomorrow. Up. Okay. And we'll we'll have extensive coverage right here on But what the thing is they're all going to the game mm-hmm. and wearing cell shirts. It's a reverse protest. I, I know, but it's funny that they're all going to the game giving John Fisher money. <laughs> yes, but also giving him, not that he cares, more bad press. He He's over that. It's got nothing but bad press. Yeah, it doesn't. They're matter. actually giving them money. What they should do is they, is they just should have literally nobody show up. Not have one fan there. Make it like COVID. Have no fans. Don't even do cardboard cutouts. Just have not one person there. Just and all of them maybe outside the ballpark. Outside the ballpark tailgating. Tailgate. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Drinking their own liquor. Yeah. But it's like, what are you trying to prove at this point? He doesn't. He hates you anyway. He doesn't care. Right. So I'm saying like, it's like the ugly stepchild trying to be like. Yo, accept me. And they're like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> There's nothing you can do that's going to make me care. I mean, that's what he's telling fans. True. So anyway, the team played ball. And actually on the other end, that's that's tough for Milwaukee. It's tough to be that team. I know that they've, they're they dealing with a ton of injuries and they've talked about it. And they, they even say, this is my, my favorite. It's like, I don't want to talk about that, but, right? Anything you say before, but doesn't count. But there are there are quite a few guys out for Milwaukee, but still no excuses. They're be- they should still be a better team in Oakland. At I home. agree. You gotta you can't get swept at home by Oakland. Maybe and this Pat is Murphy. why this is why I hate when people are like, oh, I don't even think you know, you know, a double A team could beat these guys. Well, okay, <laughs> pump the brakes. It's not that the team, the players on the team, just don't make up a good team together. Most of it's, you know, not no depth in their lineup. They're still big league baseball players, so let's let's pump the brakes on the whole. Like, oh, our double A team that year, we could have beaten the A's. Eh, yes, I think I think a triple A AAA team might be able to beat. You know, who's the best team? In, uh, maybe not the Rays. Could beat the Diamondbacks on a certain night. <laughs> if you had the right people pitching, but wait, you'll go Diamondbacks, but you won't go Rays. I wouldn't go Rays. Rays, Rays would the pitching staff on the Rays would would get you. Yeah, just because they have so much depth tired. on their staff, as why as far as like some AAA guys are not, they're not seeing that consistent of arms. The Rays will go, the Rays will go with an opener, and they'll just go one inning of a hundred from here, from here, from here, then from this side, this side, that you know, like. So, I don't see it happening. Shane McClanahan looked really good. It was great. Great series. Fun to see those two teams. Oh, ten wins at already it. for Shane. Ten wins. In about sixty-eight fast. games or something. The fast one of the fastest ever. He's gonna get to three hundred. For the Rays, yeah. Right. Three hundred what? Wins. For what? In his career. No chance. <laughs> Nobody's sniffing that again. No. That's why Cy Young, they say unbreakable records. Five hundred and eleven wins for Cy Young. Cal Ripken, safe. Cy Young, safe. DiMaggio's ninety-nine point nine percent safe. I will say fans aren't paying attention to wins anymore. Most fans, they're not. They were for a while. They are every night when their team doesn't win and panics. Yeah. Yeah, but right. Wins. That's a different win category. They're team wins, not individual. Should you change pitching staff stat starter pitchers to what their record is when they start instead of what they actually do? I like that one a little better. You're stupid. Individual wins. I, I could not tell you anybody's individual wins record for the past 10 plus years. I can tell you Kyle Wright won 21 games last year, 20, 20 plus games for the Braves last year. If he was on the A's, how would that have gone? Doesn't matter. You pitch for who you pitch for. There's a lot of luck involved with that category. Oh my gosh. Yeah, not a lot. There's, yes, there it's is. It's gotta be good. I'm, I'm telling lot. you though, it's it's not a big deal stat anymore. I mean, I get that, but it's still important. 
just like RBIs are important. I don't care what you say. Well, all of a sudden now we care Luis Arise, your guy, sitting right around 400, but batting average doesn't matter. But now it matters because he's sitting around 400. So, no, no, no. See, this I, is so what, you're getting this is what you people get do. off my lawn old school. No, I'm just this. saying. You are. What? Don't, I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to get labeled. As what? Old school. I mean, I'm all for analytics, but sometimes the old stats do matter. Mm -hmm. Give me a dude that can drive in a runner from third. Give me that guy. I want that guy on my team with two out. Give I me think that dude. RBI is different from wins. Okay. So you don't wins. have control so, of half your wins. You don't have control of your RBIs. No one's on Especially base. nowadays where, where dudes are going. Let's let Kraft say something. Half a game. Here. Tired of talking to the. Wins, wins, wins are important if you're talking about the longevity of the season. And a lot of analytics are very much like, oh, well, what are you going to do in this pitch, in this at bat? And, you know, you got to swing for the fences. Homers are way more valuable than a ball in play. So it's okay if you strike out. Wins are really important when you look at why did, why did this team make the playoffs? Because so, oh, Shane McClenahan, he's going seven innings pitched. He has a better opportunity to get more wins. And you know what? He's not worried. He had five Ks last night. He's not worried about giving up three runs. His team had seven. Like, that's to me, that's what a winning pitcher is. But the most important stat from his line last night was seven innings because that now resets their entire bullpen in a seven to three game. You never use your closer, who's Jason Adam. You probably don't use two of your high leverage relievers. So you're using you're using two of your four high leverage relievers plus your closer doesn't have to throw and you get through and you get a W. To me, wins matter, not like, oh, Kyle Wright won 20, 20 games, 21 games. He should be a Cy Young candidate. No, there's a lot of other stuff that goes into that. But W's matter. Fans, Toasty, AJ, as a gambler, I always look at the team's record when they pitch, not the pitcher wins. New country songs. Henderson Alvarez's no-hitter walk-off from the warm-up circle shows the fragility of the win stat, in my opinion. Dude pitched a no-hitter, and it wasn't good enough for a dub. I mean, Andy Hawkins lost it to a no-hitter. Right. Jerry I, think, I think there's... Yeah, I mean, come on. I can find you a stat on what a guy hits Tuesday when the grass is wet relievers in a that... full moon. I mean, come on. Like, let's, let's be serious. If I, if I have a guy that wins more games than he loses... I'll take that guy because that yes. means the team is winning. So, I, yes, I get individual wins don't matter, but I want to know if it, when a guy takes the mound, does the team win or not? And that usually reflects on you're going deep into the games and you're giving your team a chance to win. So, therefore, that guy gets individual wins. Don't team say wins. DeGrom either there, Scott. Don't don't bring up DeGrom. No. Why? Because that's another – I can't bring up that's, any examples. Because no, that's I know not, you can't. Don't no, bring no, no, up no. real life examples, Scott. We don't want to hear that. Okay. Okay. Let's that's, move on. that's that's one. That's one example. I'm telling you, the... I'm trying to save you guys. It doesn't sound good. When, what doesn't sound to good? be like a huge proponent of of a stat that doesn't make not, a lot that's of all, sense? Neither anymore. one of us are like huge proponents. We're not dying of it. I'm just saying it's important. It is an important stat. I think it's important in the clubhouse. Is and that in fair? The playoffs. Is it important in the clubhouse? To make the playoffs, you have to win. It's yes. it's important to in the playoffs. The playoffs yes. Nowadays in the playoffs, you're saying in a playoff game, it's important. no to make no. the playoffs. It's important. You have to win the baseball game. We're talking about teams that aren't winning baseball games. The whole NL, the whole AL Central, NL Central needs to win more games. The Rays win games because they put the rest of their team in a position to be able to make it to the rest of the season. Like you have to make the playoffs, you have to have longevity and. Pitchers who win games have longevity on the mound. They have the ability to be out there to win a game. It's like saying one-run games are all luck. They're not all luck. There are things that go into it. There's not one stat that says, okay, well, this is why they win one-run games. It's because I think they have good those bullpen. Are two different, yeah, I get it. I just think these are these are different cases. Okay. Going over one-run wins That's fair. wins. I think they're two different examples. Okay. You seem bothered about this. No, you're calling me old school, old man, get on my lawn. I'm not. I'm all for it, but I'm saying I'd rather have a pitcher that wins more games and loses more games. Sure. So that's all I'm saying. But if there's yeah. a pitcher on a good team who has a five and a half ERA. Come on. If he has a five and a half ERA, he's not any good anyway. So Nope. And then the dude, and then 
his Degrom example. You want the five and a half guy? No, no, no. For your, I want the better pitcher. You are You're not game. comparing apples to apples. You're not, yeah, you're just being crazy now. I'm, I am. You, you have to said, compare I'll, apples I'll take to the guy apples. who has more wins. I'll All take right, the we, better pitcher. Yeah, <laughs> the guy with the better pitcher. I'll take the better pitcher. Right, which doesn't really reflect the win loss record most of the time. But if Kyle Wright, if Kyle Wright has a seven, has a three seven two ERA, and yeah. Joe Smith has a 372 ERA and Kyle Wright has 21 wins and Joe Smith has 10. Then I'm going to sit there and go, why did Kyle Wright have 11 more wins than this guy? You have to compare apples to apples. You can't compare Drew Hutchinson, the year he won 15 games for the Blue Jays, to Jacob DeGrom, the year he won 12 and had a 1-7 ERA. They're not the same pitcher. We're not putting wins into the equation saying, Oh, he wins. He's the best. Pay him millions. No, absolutely not. Okay, let's bring in our guest, Ryan Helsley from the St. Louis Cardinals, joining us right now. We're always spilling the conversation right into it. So, Ryan, how you doing? And I'll confirm here with Ryan, I'm sure I know the answer. Are wins important mm-hmm. in the clubhouse amongst players? Yeah, I would say so. I think guys value wins. You know, I mean, I think Wayno's two wins away from 200, and I think that's a milestone he's been chasing for a while. And probably something he feels like that if he gets there, it kind of solidifies his career. You know, because he's had a great career in pretty much every other aspect. And I think 200 is like one of those big milestones that he's trying to hit. And when, when's just still better, too. You know, they look better on your record. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm with you. It's my point. I think it's most important in the clubhouse with players. You disagree? No, I, I agree, but I, I think if you ask Ryan, would you rather have wins or losses on his record? Would you rather have wins or losses on your record? That's just a stupid question. <laughs> Why? Because it, it kills your argument right away? No, it's Because I just killed question. your – bye, you're gone. Ryan, I, would you rather on. have a 2 ERA or a 12 ERA? Like, come on. Okay, okay, That's Ryan, if you have argument. a 2 ERA versus a 12 ERA, are you going to have more wins or losses? <laughs> you're probably going to have more wins. I'm, I'm just telling you. I'm telling you what people are going to say. They're already saying it. So, Fan so then, so, already saying it. Hold on, so then, so then, do this. So then, do this. All right, Ryan. Ryan's sorry, like, what did I sorry, walk you into? got brought into this this <laughs> argument, but here it <laughs> he's is. heard it before. Your season ends. Your season ends. You have a one point five ERA. You were absolutely a boss, okay? And you have six wins. You end the season with a three two ERA, but you picked up. 12 wins, which is a uh, 10 wins. I'll even be closer. I'll be fair. But you had 10 wins, which is a more successful season. I think the ERA, I mean, I'd much rather have a better ERA than wins, honestly. Depends, though, because, okay. uh, You could be on a shitty bullpen team. No, listen, as a reliever and what he is, if he has a higher ERA and more wins, you know what that means? Ah, 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 he vultured the shit out of some games. And he, and he's scratching him. No, they know he vultured him. He gave up the lead, and his team came back and picked him up. That's that's why that's not even a fair argument. Because if he has a lot of wins and he has a higher ERA, that means he gave it up, and he knows I'm right. That's why he can't say anything. Yeah, but he's talking about starters, though. Yeah, but he's not a starter. I know, but it, this is fun. That that was a good answer, though. See. ER, is ERA the most important stat? I think no, this is important. For him, holds and saves. <laughs> what's the most important stat among Fishers? And then what's the most important stat for you? I think for starters, you know, I mean, even though the game's kind of gone away from it, I think it should be innings pitch. You know, I feel like a lot of guys haven't been going as deep, you know, the last few years. It's like, you know, used to a starting pitcher, it's like your only job was to keep it close for as long as possible, you know, then to hand it over to the bullpen and, now it's like if you get through five, you know, you're handed over to the bullpen immediately because of all the metrics and stuff they use nowadays and for most teams. And, you know, the bullpen, I think it just depends on where you're pitching. You know, you have long guys, you have guys who are always pitching the leverage. So, I mean, as a closer, as long as you get the job done, you know, I mean, as long as you keep the game right there, I think you're doing your job. Obviously, you can have guys who have a lot of saves with a higher ERA and then, you know, guys with low ERAs and not have many saves or holds. So, um, I think as long as you're getting the job done, you know, when you come to the game, then that's what matters most. All right, so, when you go to arbitration, when you go to arbitration, what didn't you go to? You went to arbitration, didn't you, this year? Yeah. Did you win? You lost, right? Lost, yeah. Are, okay, so what what do they talk about? Here, here it is, Scott. What did they argue against you in arbitration? This is this is this is it. Here you go. What did they argue against you? Yeah, basically, I, they said I didn't have enough holds and saves for like my career. Um, had one really good year, obviously last year in twenty twenty two. 
Um, but overall, I needed more, you know, saves and holds compared to the guys, you know, that they brought up and um, stuff like that. So. Why what did I say? The most important numbers him? for him: holds and saves. You already. Why are you pointing me at it? Because you were arguing with me. I said you have holds and saves. Was your you're too obsessed with wins? That's okay. The and then that's the Ryan. About. What was your argument back? And also, so, arbitration no, is bullshit. No, it's not. Yes, I've, it said, is. I've been to it. It's I won, so I don't care. It's, it was <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, now what did you argue for? Um, just like all the other numbers too, like strikeouts, walk percent. You know, I had nine wins and one loss last year. I had. The best batting average against was like 120, I think. So pretty much every other stat besides holds and saves to try to kind of, I guess, almost not really take their attention away, but show that I was good in other areas too and not just the ones that mattered most. Okay. All right. So, so my question is, nobody's brought it up yet. To me, a bullpen guy, the most important stat is inherited runners. Because if you're coming in with the muck, and you get out of there and you don't give up your inherited runners, is that valuable to the guys in the pen? Do you guys ever talk about that? Like, oh, bro, Gio, like, you're always cashing my runs in. Like, let's get that curveball going <laughs> a little bit sooner. Like, do you guys, yeah, do you guys give each other a hard time? Not really. You know, you just try to pick, pick your teammate up out there, whether you're going in after the starter or one of your bullpen guys. Maybe he doesn't have it that day. You just try to, you know, keep it right where it's at. But – I definitely think that's a stat that could be used to, you know, help guys get paid more. And I think it's called like late and critical and there's another stat for it, yeah. but it basically just shows how, you know, hectic of a situation you're brought into most times of the game. And I think that could be another way to show that, you know, guys pitch well, you know, in big time situations and, you know, can help them with their value in the future. Okay. See, the, but see, inherited runners, too. If you're Ryan Helsley and you come in and you get a clean ninth and you get one, two, three, you can't really get inherited runner. So that it's all it's all about where you pitch and how you pitch and what situations you're in, right? If you're if you're Ryan and you come in and base load and you get out of it, yeah. But if they're like, if you're like Josh Hader, I can only pitch one inning and I have to start a clean inning and then and see. Why are you it. saying it like a robot? Because that's, <laughs> I can only pitch one inning. I don't want to do he four did, out Okay, he did that. Because like he did argue years. that. Huh? He did that for a long time, though. He pitched many But innings. then he went to arbitration and said, well, that doesn't matter, so I'm going back to the three-inning save only. So okay. It's all it's all relative of what, what situation you're put in. I want to – Ryan, forget these guys. Kratz, you're good, but forget, forget – whatever Scott says, ignore. <laughs> Hit the ignore button on Scott. We're going to mute his mic. I want to go back to this weekend. You got your first taste of Ellie De La Cruz, and Scott has been LA, LA every day, every day, right? I mean, he had a great weekend against you guys. AJ didn't did want him to up, so. Oh, that's not true. Again, <laughs> ignore him. Please ignore him. I mean, you're going to tell me to shut up, but you guys were not excited about Ellie De La Cruz, though. Okay. Save lies, that. Lies. Save it. We were excited, us. but lies. Okay. He so, Ryan, what did you think back. of him when you saw him? And then I want to ask you, I have a follow-up after you see, because he scored the winning run on a ground ball and was just all over the place. So, so what did you see out of him? And should, should Scott be as excited as he is? I mean, yeah, I think he's held his own so far. You know, he played L.A. and then came to St. Louis and played well, too. And, you know, was hitting 350 or whatever, you know, obviously it's a really small sample size. But, you know, he's handled it well. And it's obviously flashed great tools, you know, and um, as fast as lightning out there around the bases. And, you know, makes it look super easy. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I think he's going to be I think he's going to be a good player for sure. Did you guys give Wayno shit for for him beating him to first base on the ground ball? <laughs> no, I, I haven't yet. I'm sure the starters might have because they, they, you know, they have some banter back and forth with each other. Okay, because I mean, it was like a two hopper to the first base, and you see Wayno, and the guy yeah. Ellie De La Cruz just blows by him. I think that's when everybody realized that his his speed was real. If he's beating a pitcher who's halfway to first already, you know, down the line for an infield hit. Okay, I understood. And Wayno is like 50 years old. So he did, you know, he's got like a cane out there. Let's not forget. Did, I watched the game yesterday, and I watched the late innings. I know you pitched on Friday. You didn't pitch Saturday. Is there – and maybe you don't know the answer to this, but is there a reason why you didn't pitch in the game yesterday? Because I thought it was a perfect situation for you to come in. I know Hicks, Hicks was in the game and Gallegos came in, but that seemed like – when he got on third, I was like, man, if they could bring in Helsley here, he could shoot, blow him away. Not that Hicks throws soft, but that was kind of – it seemed like from a fan watching, that was a perfect situation for you to come into and, and get them out of it. Yeah, um, I guess it just kind of depends, you know, whatever. I feel like it's hard as a manager, you know, really knowing how to use your bullpen, especially in long stretches, you know, like a guy who hadn't pitched in a few days. Like, oh, it's kind of a tight game here. We're down by one. Let's use them. And then, you know, we're up by one or two or three the next three or four days, you know, and then 
well, I've pitched two or three days in a row. I can't go today. So I feel like that's always a hard balance to, you know, try to get right. And so, I mean, those guys have a tough, tough job. And, um, you know, usually they come to me before the game, you know, if they have, you know, hey, if this situation happens, you haven't pitched in three days, we want to maybe use you here in the seventh or eighth of guys are on or whatever the situation may be. So they, they usually do a good job of, you know, having that line of communication. Well, you, have, you hadn't pitched since Wednesday, so it was Sunday. That's kind of – I think I said Friday. I got confused. Yeah. My days are all screwed up because uh, I have to listen to Scott all the time. Uh, <laughs> He's got the poker face the whole time as, as you and me are going at it too. He's like, just let them make fun of each other. Anyway. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> that's, that, that's more of why I was asked because you hadn't pitched since Wednesday. So then you're thinking, okay, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's a bunch of days in a row. So is it, you're okay, right? I want to make sure you're okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Listen, as a player, I, yeah, I get it. You're good. You're good. Hey, you we were talking about we were talking about Ellie, and I don't want to necessarily only talk about Ellie, but if you see a guy like that that has is a toolsy player, you know, an all star type of guy, would you rather face a guy who has blazing speed and can beat you to first base like he beat Wayno? Would you rather face the guy that has power but no hit? Or would you rather face like a Luis Arise type of guy? Um, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, probably the guy with power, with you know, who strikes out a lot, or you know, all or none type of guy. Um, shouldn't get him out more times than not. And Arise is obviously hitting four hundred, and I've faced him a lot in the minor leagues. And you know, I don't I can't remember back in the minor leagues, but he's always you know hitting the ball, putting the ball in play, even you know in today's game. And, um. De La Cruz, he's gonna he's gonna be a stud, you know. He's got all the tools, so he's probably the hardest guy to get out, you know. Overall, and it'll be interesting to see how you know he fares the rest of the way. Dude, no one can hit 104. Okay, let's just let's just <laughs> you just rear back and whoo, here comes 104, dude. I don't care who you are, Rise, De La Cruz, I, dude, whoo, 104 is 104. I don't care. And he's got competition though too. Who? Like ben Joyce. Oh, he's hurt though. Right, but Ellie Ryan's not hurt. I know him and well, Hicks those 102 too. I mean, yeah, yeah but like those are got, sinkers. Hicks you, doesn't you got, strike out dudes. Minnesota Duran, he throws really hard as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, he beat you the other day. Are you pissed about that? He beat you, he went 105 on you. Yeah, it was like 104, six or four to the heavy gun, one. heavy gun. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't pencil whip him, don't pencil whip him. <laughs> You got to be precise when you're getting up there that high. <laughs> so, do you, do you take the mound next time and you say, "Oh, I saw 104.6. I'm getting. I'm going to reach back and get 104.7." No, I mean, I didn't lie, hit lie. You know, you want that back. You know, <laughs> no, you want that again. Hicks, Hicks has already got me beat anyway. He hit 105 flat and 18, so he's already kind of oh. got that all time bragging right. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't hit 104 until like September last year, so maybe maybe later in the year. Oh, okay. When you, you gear it up for this, the playoff run? Yeah. Get some extra you, juice out there. Do you ever go up to Wainwright and say, sorry we're picking on Wayno today, but do you ever go up to Wainwright and say, hey, my changeup is harder than your fastball? <laughs> no. No, I would never. <laughs> Why would not? Go? Why not? Dude, tell him I said it. He'll just laugh, I promise. Yeah, he'll say it sometimes, you know, like before we have meetings and stuff, obviously, and pitchers meetings, and we'll do like highlights and things we did good and you know, if me or Hicks are throwing our sliders are 90 to 93, and he's like, dude, I don't even throw my fastball that hard. So he kind of he kind of plays his own jokes on himself. I'm, I'm trying to find the Velo leaderboard here. Do you, so when, when you're looking at this, do you just see this on social, or do you check out, like, Baseball Savant to see, hey, who's pumping 105 these days in the league? Yeah, like, I follow Pitching Ninja and – I forgot it's another pitching page on Instagram and usually those guys are all over it. And, you know, if anybody's hitting 104 or 105 or 103, even, you know, usually probably dominating out there. So he's usually getting posted. and I see it pretty quick. Ryan, what would be your advice? I know Joyce just got hurt. What was it? The hand, right? Uh, yeah, right hand irritation. So yeah. Right hand from throwing the ball too freaking hard. So his hand is sort of going, Whoa. well, I was going to ask, I mean, it's a young guy just called up. I mean, very recently, uh, picked by the Angels, they're they're being aggressive with some of their guys, bringing them up to the show. And Joyce hadn't pitched, I think, at all back to back, right? In the mind, never pitched back to back. So what would your advice be to guys like that who've got the velocity like you on how to take care of themselves and bounce back after appearances? Yeah, it's tough, you know, being in the big leagues, and you know, you got to be ready to 
pitch every day. And, um, you know, I remember in 2019 when I was in the bullpen for the first time, you know, you kind of feel some soreness and stuff that you've never really felt before and just kind of trying to navigate that and, you know, talking to other guys in the bullpen and, you know, you can pitch through soreness and obviously there's a difference between soreness and pain. So being able to differentiate between those two things is key and um, obviously having a good routine every day and kind of getting your body in that mindset of, you know, being able to, you know, pitch every day and paying attention to it day in and day out. What what are you doing on your off day? As you're in St. Louis, right? So what do you what do you do besides listening to Scott lie tell lies? What else are you going to do what are today? You talking about? <laughs> oh, we, we we play San Fran tonight. We don't we don't have off. I'm actually. Oh, I thought you guys today. had off today. Uh, uh-uh. we got San Fran for three. Oh, um, so oh, that's a big series, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but usually maybe I just hang out with my family, hang out with my baby. Hang out with my wife and just chill, maybe go to the zoo or something and go eat or have brunch, you know, just kind of take it easy, go walk around the park. What's the, first thing, what's the first thing you go and look at? When you go to the zoo, what do you like? Ryan Helsley needs to go look at the tigers or what is it? What's the animal? <laughs> Honestly, my favorite animal is probably a polar bear. I've always been fascinated. If I had to pick one, it'd be a polar bear. They look like. They look like they're having so much fun. They look like yeah. they're they're like in the water. They're chilling out. I get that. I get that. I'm 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 on with that. What do you think? You were you were talking about young guys coming up. Do you feel like teams? You know, you know the Cardinals. Do you feel like teams prepare guys to come into the big leagues to be a bullpen guy, or do you feel like teams are like, well, you're just doing the best, so you're going to get called up to the big leagues? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think they have a good system in AAA, you know, trying to get guys, you know, on a good good schedule to kind of help their body build that, you know, endurance and stuff and be able to handle that workload. And, you know, most of the time when you call up to the big leagues, you're probably not going to be pitching in, you know, the most important situations. So, you know, going back to back usually isn't that big of a deal when you come up, at least as a starter, you know, because you're probably a guy that's going to throw two to three innings out of the bullpen and just try to eat some innings at first, you know, and then maybe kind of gradually work your way into those bigger situations and then, you know, kind of figure out how to navigate that soreness and be able to be available every day. Ryan, I want to ask you about the team. Obviously not still in the spot you guys want to be. Wayno said um, you have to play perfect to win right now. Do you feel the same way? Like take us through the day to day. Are there games where you're like, damn, pitching, clicking, D clicking, we didn't score. Damn. We, we put up a ton, but we had a bad day on D or, or pitching wise. Do you feel like there's a lot of that going on more so than the last few years? Yeah, for sure. You know, I feel like a lot of guys in that clubhouse have never really lost like this or, you know, lose games the way we have. You know, we've always been doing things the, the right way, like the small things, you know. And, um, you know, like Wayno said, it just kind of feels like there's another way we're losing a game every day or, you know, we don't pitch today and we hit and give up eight runs, but we scored seven, you know, whatever it may be. And, you know, we're just trying to figure out a way to, you know, get rolling and, you know, guys are showing up every day, you know, optimistic and ready to go. And, you know, vibes are still good in the clubhouse, you know, guys are ready to go. And, you know, we have a lot of faith and belief in our team, but it's a tough game, you know, everybody else on the other side of the, you know, fields trying to win the game too. And you're going to get everybody's best effort day in and day out. There's no easy wins out there. Are there any team meetings that have gone down? Um, not really. We've had a couple, um, nothing, you know, nothing too crazy. Just, um, guys, you know, trying to say, you know, still just, you know, keep the right mindset, you know, stay after it's a long season, you'll have a hundred games left and, you know, we can get on a roll and, you know, make a push from, I think we're seven or eight games back or whatever it is, you know, have a hundred games to make up those eight games. So just trying to take it one day at a time, you know, and stay positive. Do you know about the cardinal rule with team meetings? Kratz, let's see if he knows. Otherwise, Kratz, you can't say cardinal him. rule to a cardinal. No, I said that on purpose. No, oh, that was a that was a pun. <laughs> Do you know it, Ryan? Mm-mm. The number one rule with team meetings, Kratz, tell him. But you got to have some stud going the next day. You can't have a AAA call up pitching the next day. You get <laughs> you get a team meeting, and then boom, Wayno's on the mound. Boom. Flaherty's throwing the next day. Like you're <laughs> you're you're rolling out the hot hand. You're not like, hey, we should have a team. Oh wait, no, 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 not 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 tonight, not tonight. <laughs> you have to have the pitching matchup, basically, right? Like you, same thing. You don't want to do it when you're facing. Uh, I don't know. 
Like, McClanahan? McClanahan, which is what <laughs> happened in the, with the Red Sox. The Red Sox like, we're going to have a team meeting. Oh, yeah, we're facing McClanahan in the Rays. They got whooped. You like say. Bad timing. Let's clean up the defense. Oh, we did, but we faced McClanahan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Ozzy? I told you what Ozzy Gein you say about team meetings. What? Good teams win, bad teams have meetings. Mm-hmm. And they haven't had meetings yet, so they still believe they're a good team. Mm-hmm. I like it. Has Ollie has Ollie come in and like thrown the the spread yet or anything? No, nah. he's he's talked to us, you know, like early when we were struggling like really bad, and you know, kind of turned it around there for a little bit, um, and obviously been kind of scuffling here as of late. Um, but no, I mean, I'm not in the dugout obviously very often, and so I don't really see you know kind of the hot side of him that people see when he's out there arguing with the umpires and stuff. And but he, he's usually he's usually pretty calm by the time we get in there and eating after the game. You know, you, you know what you need to do. You need to you need to get Joe McEwing going. You got to get Super Joe going somehow. Just go in there and just start yelling at him. I don't know. Dude, just get get him going because then he'll get all fired. Does up. Joe get hot? Oh, his face will turn all his face turns all red. It's great. I mean, when he gets fired up, his face turns red. He just it's, it's, it's Super Joe. I mean, have you seen him get mad yet? No, honestly, I, I've talked to Joe a little bit. Not not a whole lot. I love Joe. He's a great guy. Um, I haven't seen him flip a switch yet, so. <laughs> he was probably just hanging out with you. True. He was my third base coach. I'd be like, why, <laughs> why don't you send the dude when I get the one hit a month with the runner on second? Did you drive him crazy? Of course. I drive every coach crazy. <laughs> hey, we were talking about the other day, we were talking about chirping. Now, the Cardinals, when I first came to the big leagues in 2010, they were the, like, epitome of chirping. It was, like, La Russa, any pitch that, like, Moved a hitter. La Russa was yelling. Big Mac was over there. Hey! And especially, are you guys big chirpers? Um, I think those guys like to have some fun in the dugout. And obviously, we're in the bullpen, so you're not really chirping too much when you're 400 feet away in right center field. But um, I think those guys, you know, have fun with it. You know, I mean, I know in spring training, you know, the you know chirp like that. You know, balls close to a guy. You know, hey, watch out! Yell at the pitcher. You know. Um, I don't know there were any more than the other team, so but I know they like to have their fun for sure. After you pitch, do you come in the dugout and chirp, or do you just go in and get your get your ice and get your mobs and get a little chest workout in? Yeah, I'm not I'm not much of a crap talk type of guy, you know, more of a just go out there and perform and um, let let the other guys do their talking if that's their thing. That's not really not really my style. Dude, you know Wayno's chirping. Come on, I played there. I played in St. Louis with Wayno. But what kind of chirp? It's like the funny nerdy chirp. Yeah, it's fun. It's not. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not like stuff. he's not. It's, yeah, it's, it's like he, Yeah, Wayno is like the nerdy. Oh uh, yeah, well your mom, you know, they're like he says that. No, I don't know. I'm just saying, <laughs> your mom can't hit. You know, like yeah, just he, dad jokes. Yeah, like yeah. just just stuff that you just look at him. You're like, come on, you're better than that. What's his worst? Yeah, what's his worst life. dad joke? What's Wayno's worst dad joke that he's told that you remember? Worst dad joke? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Are they bad though? Are they normally pretty bad? No, nah, he's usually good. He's he yeah, never said anything. You know, that's like caught me off guard or anything. Okay. You, do you, my my last question: Are you doing chest workouts after your? I, no, no, no. I usually don't do chest workouts. My my thing is Tuesday, Tuesday, Friday, I work out no matter what because we usually have a game, you know, to stay consistent. Um, and I, I usually do two to three sets depending on how I feel, usually like five sets or five reps. And uh, after the game, I'll do some like shoulder stuff, you know, like get a little pump in the shoulder and maybe the triceps or forearms just to kind of get a nice little flush in there. Are, are you excited to go to London next week? Yeah, I think it's going to be cool. I'm not excited for you, that seven-hour flight, but it should be good. <laughs> you guys get a two days off before, is that right? Two days off before? Uh, yeah, I believe it's two. So you leave you leave Wednesday night, right? Red eye over, you have Thursday, Friday off, and then play Saturday, Sunday back? Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to get some tea? And crimpets! Gonna... <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll have to, I'll have to figure that out. Have you ever been over there? Plan. Never, never been over okay. There. You, you got to do the whole shop. You got to go to Harrods and do the whole shopping thing. You got to go to Buckingham Palace and stand in front of the guards and try to make them laugh. You know, and they're, they're all. <laughs> he's got to work. Yeah, he's got two days say. off. He's got Thursday and Friday off. Well, no, but they fly there. 
Okay, they'll take the red eye. They'll be there Thursday morning. Okay. So they'll probably have all day Thursday off. They'll probably have a light workout on Friday. They'll throw some 100 mile an hour open. So he's got like a day and a half ish. Okay. Okay. Big Ben. So you make the itinerary for him, but you can't have him run around to seven things. Like, okay, give him, you got to you got to do give him three things. Okay, Big Ben and Westminster Abbey are right next to each other. That's okay. one. You got to do that. Right. The Tower of London is not far. You got to do that. And you got to go to Harrods. Those are like the three things you have to do in London. That I feel and like. They're not that far from me. London is not that big. No, that's reasonable. They're, they're very in Trafalgar Square and all that. They're all right there. It's not like they're spread out all over the place. You've never <laughs> been to London, clearly. Obviously, I've been to London. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Anyway, and, go, and go on the eye, too. Go on the eye. Anything else? I mean, get some fish and chips, go to some pubs. Mm-hmm. Get a snake bite or two. <laughs> and there's a lot no, of things. You know what stood out too is Ryan. You said, I mean, seven hour flight because you're in the middle of the country, so you don't have to deal with that stuff. You know, like some of the teams, you're, you're in Miami and you're going west coast, or you're west coast mm-hmm. and you're going to the northeast. You know, you guys in the Midwest, that's the one thing that that you have it good with, right? Yeah, no doubt. And especially when we had more, you know, games in our division. You know, we played however many games, sixty or seventy, however many it was. You know. You, our furthest flight in division was like an hour, I think, you know, so our travel was super easy. And then, you know, this year we're playing all the teams, which I like, you know, I like playing everybody and travels a lot, a lot harder. But I mean, I can't imagine being in Seattle, you know, having the shortest flights, two hours, no matter where you go. I mean, it's going to take a toll on guys. Well, enjoy it, dude. We'll talk to you when you get back. Try to at least accomplish one of AJ's 30 <laughs> things to do. <laughs> all right. Uh, London's awesome. No, I know. London's great. Been. Oh, have you? Yes. Cheerio, Ryan. Great to see you, man. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Cheers, man. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan yeah. Helsley of the St. Louis Cardinals with us on FT Live. It's a good call. I, I mean, I remember seeing Cardinals Cubs in London, and it's, all right, it's a week away. It's next week. Next Saturday. Mm. It was on Fox. Yeah. So, well, I mean, 10 days or whatever. Yeah, it's close. Tommy Canley of the Yankees is going to join us soon. It is time now to pop off, presented by our friends at cookie, candy, pop, and cereal pop. It's right here. It's on the desk. If you want it, I'll mail it to you maybe. Okay, so the Phillies and Dodgers had a lot for us this weekend. And really, I want to focus on the Philly side of things. Because on Friday's show, we learned during the show, the story came out from Matt Gelb about the pitch clock. Did yeah, it was fast. That? It was like fast. How can a clock be fast? It's just a little button. Not when it starts. When it starts. When it starts. It starts fast. But is that up to the umpire or is that up to a clock operator? Is it because, okay, so I I don't don't know who told me the story, but somebody used, they knew, used to run the clock at a college basketball game. And depending on how fast or slow they would start it, they could gain seconds or lose seconds in the game. So they would bet over unders because you could gain like up to a minute on either side of it. And if their buddy was like, I don't know who this was, but it, it, are I, you unveiling a scandal? Yeah, don't. It's not a scandal. Oh, you're know. saying they just pay attention to when the, the clock's going. Like they'll yeah. look at the clock. Yeah. And they could tell that it was quick or slow. And they knew that you could gain like time well, one way or another. Right. You could gain maybe oh, like a possession a or two. Yeah. Well, okay. In this case, Kratzy, and you know, because they're buzzing about it in Philly, the players this year had been barking about it. They're like, yo we're getting a lot of pitch clock violations at home. What's going on? It feels like the clock's going faster here than on the road. They talked to MLB and what happened, Kratzy? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Ball games, let us know. Like, And it wasn't just the whole like, oh, well, you know, it's just the Phillies players. They're pissed about it. No, they were asking visiting players. And it wasn't just, it was equal. It wasn't just Phillies. Like they were the most, the biggest culprits, the space between first place, most violations at a stadium and second place is the same, is the same difference from second to 10th or 11th place in the amount of violations. And they're saying that it's, you know, it's because they're not re or they're resetting it before it's supposed to be reset. And then they just let it run. I thought that was up to the umpire. I thought the umpire went like, then the umpire like go like this not on each start one, it? not on each one. When does he do this? When does he do like the woohoo? Let's start the clock thing. Certain cases, insert like like a so so you get a ball, you get a ball, and the ball's scuffed or you don't like it. It's chalky or it's too big. You throw it out. The umpire can throw you another ball, and then he'll give you this after a stoppage. 
or when the guy gives a, or when the guy gives a timeout, like, like, let's say the hitter takes his timeout, takes his timeout. And as soon as the hitter gets back in the box, you'll see, you'll see the, you'll see the umpire go, okay, you know, his timeout's over. He puts his foot in, maybe he's not ready to hit, but then they'll start it up again. So that actually brings me to Aaron Nola from the weekend because Rob Thompson was booted from Saturday's <laughs> game awesome in the sixth inning. <laughs> So we have that too. So let's show Ryan, uh, Rob Thompson getting booted from the game this past weekend. What did he do? He threw another baseball out. Is this the first time we've seen anybody contest a pitcher throwing baseballs out? So what, if he doesn't like the ball, he has to throw it anyway? I, I guess that's what they're saying. Ridiculous. Bill Miller is telling, uh, Rob Thompson's been thrown out of this game. Rob Drake's going to come down and try to help yeah, out here. Why not? Bring them all in. <laughs> you know, we were on a call with Major League Baseball about 10 days ago, and they referred to this, and I wondered if they were going to say, well, they're not going to be allowed to throw baseballs out at the, uh, you know, the amount of times they do it, but they said now it was all right. At least they alluded to it. Apparently, they changed your mind after you hung up. <laughs> that was good. Crux commentary is the best. He's, <laughs> he's, he's the best. We have a new I, way to get booted from a game now. If your pitcher is taking too long checking baseball, I don't like this one because the ump was pissed. The ump's like. Yo, you didn't even check that baseball. You didn't even put your hands around it. Nola did say ball back. Nola did say he did it on purpose. That's what but we're But if you notice, to. after this though, the game got out of hand. The Dodgers went out and scored like six runs the next inning, and just then put the game away. But he even said it though. He goes, "Yeah, I was trying to break the rules." So I'll give you the quote. Aaron Aaron Nola said after the game, "I was feeling it and walking back to the mound, talking about the baseball. The clock had started. I wanted to throw the ball off to get an extra second. Guess they didn't like that. <laughs> Balls are slick. I need to rub them up. Sometimes they're chalky. Sometimes they're slick. Sometimes the seams are bigger than others. Sometimes they're smaller. So, and then uh, Topper, his skipper, came out and actually gave him plenty of time. He said, oh, you want time? I'll give you five minutes because I'm going to put on a show for the crowd. Well, Kratzy, can't the can't the player? This is a question. Can't the players go to the who's the clock operator? I don't know who it is. It's probably some intern. You would definitely know who it is. I'm saying, yeah, I don't know who I don't I'm know. Who they are. When you were playing, if I was playing 100. Couldn't you go to the clock operator and say? Give me a couple extra seconds, dude. Like, there's not, there's not like an MLB official up there. There's It's a home team person. I know, but there and, will be one if you start up that But how shit. would they know? Just give them, just give them that extra, extra second. Hey, you know, the ball gets lobbed back. Catch it. And then give me a, then give me a reset. Definitely can't be quick for your own guys at home. And I know these, all these people went to their, this like, training seminar of how to do it correctly i forget what stadium they all went to they went to it and they were like you know they had each their own button to see if everybody was pushing the clock in time but no i think they should like this is this is what you're going to start to see you're going to start to see the old you know offensive line or defensive linemen go down when they're running the hurry up offense and (laughs) ah so you need to see what you need to do is you need to see like Trey Turner or Bryson Stott going, hey, my guy's grinding a little bit. I can't go to the mound. I can't delay it. Oh, oh no, my, my shoe's untied. And then you give your guy a little bit of time because you how don't many, have a disengagement for that. How many uh, trainers are we going to come out with? See, coming out with a cold spray? <laughs> oh, Training cold guys spray. like hamstrings. Oh, oh, much better now. Thanks. Or, <laughs> Noah's in the ninth inning. He's, oh, it's a hot day in August, sweating bullets. Oh man, Trey Turner's like, ooh, ooh, I feel something in my my hammy. <laughs> Trainer waddles out there, gives him a couple. Of, oh, I'm fine now, thank you. You know how some teams have five hitting coaches. Oh, number four, we need you. Bark at the ump, get booted. I'll go to talk to him, <laughs> and we'll buy us five minutes but right the there. The thing is, 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 is the home clock operator supposed to be? I know supposed to be neutral, but just. Maybe a little quick when the visiting yeah, guy's out there. Maybe just no, a little bit slower. They're watching you now. They're watching, watching you. Watching. The Philly, maybe I, I don't know what I had to say, and then Tommy's hey, ready. Maybe I had to cough before I hit the button. 
Or maybe I didn't. <clears throat> Matt hey. Gelb did a great job covering this in The Athletic. He said the Phillies, according to team sources, submitted concerns to the league office more than a month ago. MLB officials said they would investigate. They told the Phillies they found some inconsistencies on how the timer was operated and that it would be addressed. It's unclear if that happened. Once the Phillies returned from a three-city road trip earlier this week, the difference in how the clock was run at Citizens Bank Park was stark to the players. This prompted another Phillies inquiry to the league office to be continued. Shocker, yes. you're also, are you also a flat earther, Scott? Perfect for pop-off. Me? I didn't write this story. <laughs> no, I, I despise the Kyrie Irving is not my thing. Um, put it that way. That's my pop-off. Hey, make sure you uh, put in our promo code, please, if you're interested in a little cookie candy pop. Mm. Go to cookiepopcandypop.com and enter code FOULBALL for 20% off it's so good too scott loves it it is fantastic let's bring in tommy canely our guy back at it with the yanks tommy how you doing and can't wait to get into you getting back on the mound but i do like to bring the conversation in hold on have you hold on has he ever had candy pop no way no way he's had candy pop (laughs) you know what can't you say that because he's a finely i've 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 never had those so what's up guys you, you uh, should the Twix you know, one you right know here. Dessert though. Yeah, but he but they're it. finally they're not allowed First to have off, those things in the clubhouse. Yes, now. they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Yeah, Tommy, do you guys have anymore. snacks in the clubhouse anymore? Not anymore. They, Ding? Well, he's on the Yanks. They're giving him lobster, shrimp, Dude, steak. We I remember when I was with we had Ozzy again. It was the whole health food revolution started. The clubhouses would have to take all the ice cream out, and then we would come in town, and they'd ha- they'd be like, "Oh, we can get rid of all the ice cream." They throw all the crappy food back out there. We, <laughs> and then, then the then the Yankees would come in, they had to take it all out, and we come back, and there's all the ice cream and all the candy pop. So yeah, it worked out for you guys. Well, no, they don't do it anymore though, because these are finally tuned out. You won a now. championship though. I know, they're finally tuned athletes now. Anyway, Tommy, <laughs> um, did you hear what we were talking about with the Phils with like the little pitch clock situation where they were kind of waiting? Um, in Philadelphia versus everywhere else. And it actually hurt the home team more. So it's not like, you know, other players are pissed. And it's, I mean, it was a conspiracy theory that proved true, but it's not one that's like helping the home team. Wanted to get your thoughts on if you're paying attention to that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw it. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely uh, kind of funny that, you know, it, it actually ended up not helping them at all. So, but I could definitely see, you know, maybe, you uh, they're supposed to be what what's unbiased, you know. Uh, who knows? You never know how those clock guys are up there. So who knows? <laughs> maybe like I saw AJ. Maybe you know he had like I got a cough, and then oh sorry, now I'm gonna hit the button. So you never know. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, the word is neutral. They're supposed to be neutral. <laughs> they're neutral. If, That's if it. you were the pitch clock guy, would you be neutral, or would you be, or would you be like, dude, this guy parked in my spot. I'm definitely hitting it quick. <laughs> I, I feel like I am the wrong person to have something to do, like do something neutral for sure. Yeah, we're human if this, was, if this was like uh, this was like an Eagles game. Yeah, everything against them now. If it was <laughs> earlier in the earlier in my career, yeah, I'd be trying to do anything I could to cheat to try to get them to win. You know, that's tired, Tommy. That's tired. <laughs> Wait, are you an Eagles fan or not? Oh, see, AJ no, wasn't on no, the first just, time around with Tommy. Just, Tommy, just pro, is, I, had, I had to do that for Kratzy just right up. Yeah, right. he's not an Eagles fan. <laughs> not anymore. No, so long gone. Wait, how do you? You don't just switch. Yeah, you just put it down. We did this last time. You're gonna have to watch back. Okay, sorry, right. sorry. <laughs> I, I want to talk. Let, let's get to. Hey, you're back on the mound, dude. You know, you had to sit around, wait it out. So how pumped are you to be back with the squad? And, I mean, frankly, I know the bullpen's really good with the Yanks, but with Judge out, not as much offense going on. They need you. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty excited. I mean, finally get back out on the mound, especially in New York. is uh, It was special. So, uh, I mean, pretty much I'm feeling good. You know, we've had a – we've gone through a slew of injuries here again. But uh, it's kind of just next man up. Like uh, Kratzy remembers in 19, 18, we would have all these injuries, but then guys would step up. So we're, uh, I feel like we got a few guys like that right now. And it's uh, the team is going to keep on riding with it. I mean, we had a tough series this past weekend with the Red Sox, but uh, I think we're, we're, we're doing good and we're in the right, 
the right track right now. So it's just getting over these little injuries and, you know, guys getting back right. So we're all heading in the right direction. Can you win without Judge? I think so. I mean, obviously he is a big part of our offense. I mean, it's no brainer. We all see it. But, uh, I mean, as long as you uh, – I feel like we, we had to change our offensive approach a little bit without him, obviously, because, uh, you know, he's a big home run bopper. He's our guy in the, you know, number two hitter. He's our best hitter. So, we've had to make a few adjustments. I mean, like I said, we're getting a few guys back now. We need them to kind of, you know, get, get rolling and uh, get used to playing every day again. Like, uh, G just got back. Donaldson got back. Uh, we're still obviously Bader should be back soon. So once we get our guys in the lineup again, we can get get a little uh, you know momentum here going forward. Can you win without Mike Harkey as your bullpen coach? And in, in the- <laughs> 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 oh man, I, it'd be it'd be tough times without him out there. It re- that so that we we didn't have him for two games. Uh, what was it? The series, right? Yep. Friday and Saturday. He wasn't out there with me. It was it was weird. <laughs> it happens every once in a while, but it's weird. Has he given you any any good quotes? Because he's oh, he's gosh. known to say some things. Like I remember, he used to be with the White Sox, and he would he would say, "Man, that's an optical conclusion." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? He does have some. He does. He, oh, shit, what's, he's got something that he always says. I can't even remember what the hell it is now. Damn, I wish I was prepared for that one. He's got some good stuff. I mean, he'll keep, he'll keep you laughing pretty much the whole time. It's awesome out there with him. He's literally one of the big reasons why I even came back. No really? way. He was a he was oh, he yeah. part of the recruiting pitch? Like, did he call you and say, "Hey, dude, it's an optical conclusion <laughs> yeah. that you land back here"? Uh so he reached out to me. I think right as the season ended right around there. And then, I mean, I talked to him here and there over the last couple of years because he would check in see how I was doing and stuff because uh, we always had a good relationship. And I know his uh, his wife and my wife and uh, his daughters and kids, they they would talk to my wife. So, like, we were always, like, you know, filled in on what's going on with each other's families and stuff. So it was uh, – he was a big, big reason why. That's good. That's good. Now the Yankees have a strict facial hair policy. Are you going to get in trouble because you got a little growth going on? Will they come get well, you even right. though you don't have a game today? Uh, no, not today. <laughs> They're not going to find me. <laughs> <laughs> so you can take the day off from shaving because you have an off day. Yeah. Oh yeah. So like tomorrow, I, I didn't even realize this, but I'm shaving every other day now. It used to be like, oh, I could wait every third, fourth day. It's every other day. You're oh, much more. It's awful. Yeah, you've grown up so much. How is puberty treating you? That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish it was like the the old days where you know you have to shave every maybe once a week. That was good stuff. Do you check the mirror and go like, "Oh, uh, my Yankee efficient here. Is this acceptable yeah. for me to go into work?" Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you'll you'll walk by the bathroom and you look at the mirror and you go, uh, "That's probably you probably gotta get rid of this." The worst is when you get Booney to come up to you. He goes, "You got to shave, like right up in your face." You you gonna shave today? Gives you one of those. It's nice. That's when you know it's a little too long. So then you shave in the clubhouse. Oh yeah, that's fine. Right then, you, shave, you have to go right. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, it's probably a good idea to go probably right then and there and get it over with. Would listen, he listen to Skip? No, yeah. would he not pitch you because your beard is too long? Well, he's not going to say no. He goes to show. No, I mean, what I if he didn't? That is true. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't test those waters. Uh, <laughs> this, this guy would. <laughs> oh, I'd be like, this guy would. <laughs> how exact? I figure I'd have it figured out on like an electric razor exactly how long I could have it until Boone was like, "Hey, you should shave." And I'd be like, "Hey, Boone, your hair is gray now." <laughs> <laughs> it's an extra job for Booney versus everyone else. For real, he's got to size up twenty six players every day. Can you imagine if, let's say, Aaron Judge one day was like, "I'm going to grow a beard," and he's like, "Hey, Ooh. you're going to shave," and Aaron, Aaron Judge is like, "Hey, Boone, fuck off." What would happen? <laughs> We're going to fine you. Oh, okay, here's five hundred a day for the rest of the year. It'd be the ultimate. Won't even off. miss it. Won't even miss it. God, Speaking of imagine. puberty. Speaking of puberty, Tommy, your bedroom, you're, you're obviously in your apartment in New York. 
Very white walls. Can we mix in like a poster or something on the wall? Got nothing going on. Nothing. <laughs> we can't All even. The we can't. In the world. We we can't get like a poster or some sort of picture on a wall. Nah, I think me and my wife are over it. We're not even worried about decorating. I get. <laughs> I I feel like you really once you have the kids, you just kind of just all bets are off. Let's give up. At home, I worry about like my house at home, but here, nah. Whatever. You could do you could do one day, a couple hours, you walk around, you go to one of those art galleries, you go, oh, this looks cool. And you go, oh, two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars. Oh, okay. I'll see you later. No, you go to you go yeah. to Spencer Gift and you buy the poster with the with the thing you have to stare at and see if you can see the ship. <laughs> just to get rid of the white on the wall. <laughs> I, I enjoy the, your... the echoing, you know. Yeah. You can hang one of your jerseys. You can hang one of your jerseys. <laughs> you can on your wall. True. I want a crash jersey. That's what I want. On the wall. No, they only they only yes. have jerseys of mine. They don't have actual jerseys. <laughs> Jersey <laughs> player. Tommy, you just came off a of rehab. Oh. You just came off a of rehab for a little while. What did you buy the boys down there? Did you get the boy? Did you hook the boys up? Because you're on a two year deal, so I got to know. Oh yeah. We're gonna judge you based on what you got for the boys. <laughs> I've been buying way too much spread the last few years. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> uh, it's part of it. It's part. It is. It is. I mean, you you learn from the older guys. So, let's see. Where was I? Uh, I didn't have to cover spread in double A, so that was good. I had uh, we had Donaldson and Stanton there, so oh, they, yeah. uh, they hooked that one up. Uh, so when I was in Scranton, I think I got them Mission Barbecue. Oh, that that's right? a good place. I, yeah, that's right. That place is crazy. That place is unreal. It smacks. You are exactly right. Like I ate it. I yeah, I wasn't gonna eat it after I ate. It. I go, holy shit! Well, <laughs> I haven't had ribs like that in forever. It's been a while. That place definitely smacks. I liked it, and then uh. So that was in Scranton, and then when I was in Tampa, I got them Renzos. Some it's a steakhouse in Tampa. I have, I have no idea. Burns? Did you, you didn't get a burn? Burns is good. I didn't want to do burn. I think Burns is way overrated. Why? Overrated. Lie. Have you met Scott Braun? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm overrated. No, you're lying. I'm a I'm a more of a. No, you I like lie, and, and I cover for you. What was that, Tommy? Charlie's. I'm a Charlie's guy. Really? Charlie's Steakhouse? Yeah. I like yeah. Charlie's more. Okay. Interesting. All right. It's cheaper, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't is it cheap? I don't even know. Well, I don't, yeah. I think then the Burns? The steak is better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I'll take your word for it. I, I disagree, but that's okay. We all have <laughs> opinions in life. I want to know how a guy... I got, well, there's two questions. One, I want to know how a guy from New York ends up at Lynn University in Boca. Because that's that's a long way from New York to Boca Raton. And oh yeah. So ex please explain that. As I'm from Florida, I was born in New York. We know about Lynn up north. You do? Yes. Oh, and then how do you end up at Lynn University when you're from New York? So, long story short, my dad is crazy, pretty much. So he would drag me to all these you know showcases camps. So we went down to Florida one summer for like two weeks. I went to the FAU camp and originally they were all over me they they loved me uh something happened where i had a falling out with like paperwork deadlines or something i don't know and then i kind of ran ran out of options coming towards my dad wanted me to sign early in november so i ended up emailing the lynn coach because they loved me at the camp and uh the guy was right back to me in know, 10 minutes so i was like all right cool he's like yeah we got we got some money left we'll i'll send over all this stuff and get it going Next thing you know, I was going to Lynn. So, and uh, I basically Perfect. just wanted to go. I wanted to go down south for for baseball out of high school. I was done playing baseball in March when it was literally twenty five degrees. But understood. Now it doesn't bother me. So nice. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. But that's I was in New York. I was in New York this past week. I was there Tuesday and Wednesday. Do you have lung cancer like I do and from Wednesday when the <laughs> sky was orange? Because I after Wednesday, yeah. I felt like I, I've never smoked a cigarette, but after Wednesday, I felt like I had a whole carton of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that, that was – the air was not great. Uh, so I've never seen that before. I mean, I, I know it's like a if – you, if you're from California, that's like a, a 
regularity, I guess, out there. That's insane to me. I didn't know that was a thing. But it was bad. Like, it got really bad. Like, <laughs> where you're at the field and the sky is just orange. It's like we're, it's like almost like we we're in the apocalypse right there. I was about to be like, should I get a, should I get going home and start packing up and, you know, head home and start boarding, <laughs> start boarding up the doors and stuff? What are we doing here? Yeah, I was I was there. I put I played golf in it. I played golf that that morning in it. And at the turn, it went it went from normal little cloudy to like the color of this helmet next to me, and I was like, "Oh, there's something wrong here." Did you guys talk about maybe going home? No, we're we're we're, we're baseball players. We don't quit golf. <laughs> we keep going. We keep grinding through. We don't stop. <laughs> but then I wanted to, so then I'm staying at the White Sox team hotel. I get on the White Sox team bus. It was set to go at 3:45 to go over to Yankee Stadium. And the sky is orange. And I, there's no, I'm like, there's no way you guys are playing this game. You know? What were guys saying? So, I mean, for the Yankees, oh, yeah. this, this is home turf. Were you guys texting or hanging out already and being like, no chance? Yeah, everybody showed up and people were like, this game's canceled. It's like, no brainer. And that was at the time, I think, I don't even know what air quality, all that number of stuff means, but I think it was at like 190, whatever. Supposedly that's crazy high and like super hazardous. And then by the time, that they finally, I think, banged the game. It was over 300 or something, uh, which was severely bad for you. So, I mean, <laughs> even when guys showed up, they were like, this is not good. Guys were like telling, saying in the clubhouse, you could smell the smoke in the clubhouse. It was it was a disaster of a day, that's for sure. So, I, I mean, luckily, you know, we, uh, we didn't have to play in that. I'm sure that would have been great. Guys are – sucking in all that air and huffing and puffing. Who knows what would happen after a game like that? Hey, I did it. So I asked if you had lung cancer like you I did. did. Yeah. You know what I have? Tommy, you know, have you ever seen Zoolander? Yeah. <laughs> I have the black yeah. lung. The black lung pop. <laughs> <laughs> but you were in there one day, Derek. Yeah, because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> people on the West Coast go, this is what we call September. <laughs> That's what my friends Dude, on the West Coast I know they were st- – I'm telling you, I don't think it's ever been as bad. I've never seen a sky – and Tommy backed me up. That was the color that it was. I sent you guys pictures. It literally was nice orange. Funny. It looked like Blade Runner. When Harrison Ford gets out of the car, Blade Runner, and the sky is like that orange color. You've never yeah. seen it before your time. Mm-hmm. Before never. Scott's time. Kratz gets it. Yeah. But <laughs> our, our total recall when they're on Mars, that's what it looked like. It was it's apocalyptic. It was crazy. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Ever. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that in my life. Hey. Only in New York, right? That's right. It was a memorable round of golf and a memorable day. I don't know. So now back to the Yankees. I, Kraft, back, I thought, no, let Kraft get in there. Go yeah, ahead, yeah, yeah. No, I just want we were talking about Yankee Stadium and getting – it made me think about when you were – when we were in the playoffs. I don't know if you'll remember what you did, but I want you to tell me what you did, and I'll fill in the parts that made me laugh. When we, <laughs> when we would hit a home run, you know how Yankee stadium, so everybody knows Yankee stadium has like the plexiglass where you sit. And then you can also sit on the bench where, where Radley Haddad and Brownie would oh, yeah. sit. And so anyway, we hit a home run. What does Tommy Canely do when we hit a home run after you're in, in the plexiglass? So I'm inside the bullpen is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's see. I'll try to think. There's a lot of suckets that happen. You know, the <laughs> standard DX stand up and suck it. So I'm trying to remember. Is this is this what year are we talking here, Chris? Seven, seventeen, seventeen. 17? When we're playing the Astros and the Astros and the and the Indians. We beat the Indians and then we beat the Astros at home. What I, so this is, I'm inside. Is this when I'm always running out and then I just bang into the glass and stuff? Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's multiple times where I would run outside of the bullpen, give a, give a couple suckets, run, jump off the plexiglass, possibly almost going through it multiple times, and then running back inside to heart going, what the hell are you doing? And Tommy would run – and Tommy would – if you were in the plexiglass, if you were in the bullpen where it's, like, quieter, 
a ball would be going out, and as the ball's going out, Tommy would <laughs> run out, and he'd be yelling, suck it, suck it. And then he's like, and then people are throwing beer down from the bleachers, <laughs> and he's like, these are my people. I love this. <laughs> he's trying to catch beer as it's flying down into the bullpen in his mouth. Tommy it's is great, the then. bleacher creatures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those guys are the best. I mean, I know opponents hate them, but I love I think they're great. They basically epitomized me growing up as a kid, essentially. Yeah. More or less. Do you guys yeah. have conversations? Do you, do you do you talk to them? Like, give me some of your best combos with the bleacher uh, creatures. So I haven't had any, any really crazy conversations. I don't think at all, but maybe, you know, you get there was yelling down, Kaylee, Kaylee, we love you. And you just kind of give them the, hey, what's up, dude? Every once in a while, I think you might have like a 30 second conversation with one of them, but it's basically they're just yelling at you the whole time. And then you kind of give them the way, and then they go crazy. Ah, it, ah this, those guys are wild out there. I, you know how it is. They're probably few too many deep and just loving loving life up in the bleachers just is, yelling is, at everybody tommy is that you at a knicks rangers jets giants some game yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah most likely so like growing up it'd be like yo messier you're my boy glue oh my gosh <laughs> except for not the rangers not a Rangers. Fan. Who was your, t- who was your <laughs> team? I uh, Buffalo. I'm a Buffalo Sabres fan. Sabres. Oh, Sabres. All right. Oh okay. yeah. He's the most eclectic sports fan of all time. <laughs> we we yeah. hit it. We hit on like. I mean, we just hit on a little dab of it last time. This guy's got. He's got a messy jersey. He's got a. He's got you know indie car paraphernalia. He's got college football helmets. He's got. NFL. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't like the NFL anymore, AJ. If you didn't find out, because there's because there's only two. There's only two good quarterbacks in the NFL: Joe Burrow and <laughs> Brett Favre. No, hey, Brett Favre Brett not Favre. in the NFL. <laughs> no, get out of here. Who was your other guy? No, I always tell Mahomes. I always tell him there's only one. Mahomes. Just Mahomes. Oh, one Mahomes. Okay. No, you <laughs> said Burrow. I can read the text message. You said Burrow. <laughs> I've completely we changed were... thought on that one, though. Time has <laughs> already changed it. Wipe it out. I like it. We saw him take swings and he was like, nah. Everybody way down there. That's how it is. Because we were asking about Jalen Hurts and he was like, nah. Yeah, he's out. Nah. Out on him. (laughs) Out on that guy. (laughs) Nah. Hey, uh, why Tommy, are you rocking the it. South? Why are you rocking yeah, the I wanna, South? Yeah, I got to ask him about that. Oh, yeah. A lot of the the crowd on YouTube's asking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's just uh, I decided to rock my old summer team, you know, when I was in high school in summer ball. So. You know, give them a little shout out. They uh, they deserve it. I, uh, you know, the coach there. He's done. They've done so much for me. You know, growing up. Uh, so like when I would play for their uh, summer league, the summer team for them. You know, it's you got to pay for it. So back in the day, kind of you know, didn't have too much money. My pop, so he couldn't afford it. They would just kind of let me play. So and then they do all this stuff for me, getting me into, you know, gyms to throw when I was in college in the minor leagues, you know, places to work out, all that kind of stuff. And now my uh, my old coach, Kevin Rogers, he's got a building that I go to work out and I help out with all the younger kids, you know, the college kids, high school kids that kind of come up to me, ask me all kinds of stuff. So usually when I'm there kind of during the morning and stuff, doing my workout and stuff, I, uh, you know, have conversations with all the kids and try to help them out as much as I can. Who's the best player to play for South Troy? Ooh, that's not me. Well, can you name who do you, who can you name? Let's see. Best. I'm trying to think. Let's see here. Got to be Tim Stoffer. Better than better than Over Cheese. Really? Over than Grilly? Oh, that's right. Grilly, you're right. Totally forgot. Cheese. Yeah, never mind. Grilly for sure. Nah, Grilly. Yeah, 100%. I would say Grilly. Like, get out of here, Stoffer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Stoffer, I mean, that is what it's got. It's it's those two. I'll put those two at the top. Who's got a better body Thanks. than Tom Murphy? <laughs> oh, nobody. 
I mean, that guy is... <laughs> Tom's a house. <laughs> he's Come unbelievable. Guy, he's an absolute brick shit house. <laughs> Wait, you got, I've, and I'm going to butcher the name, in the Yanks org, Ben, how do you, does anyone know how to say it? You know what I'm talking about? I'm looking at the list right now. I haven't called a game with him, so I'm not calling games this year, so I'm not the pronunciation Oh, Ben wrote over, over, over it. Yeah, wrote, yeah. wrote, wrote, Robert. Oh, no, Roy Vett? Yeah. Roy Vett? Roy Vett? He, he's not listed on the website. No, he's in the he's Wait. in the org. He's he's stacked. Oh, no. We're talking about South Troy guys. He's I'm looking at South I know, but you talked about Tom Murphy, and I was talking about a catcher in his, oh, in okay, his organization. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, that's Jack? That's what I'm getting confused. Yeah. Okay. You know oh, Ben. Yeah. Tell we're, him about Ben. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ben, yeah, Ben. We call him the guy with the big biceps, you know? That's what he's known Ben's for. Ben's massive. <laughs> Dude's huge. You got, you got yeah. Diaz biceps? Ooh, yeah, I think so. I think Even so. though I was talking to Ben the one day, he's kind of they're small. He's small right now. He feels small. Uh-oh. He's been hurt. Can't lift. He had I don't remember what it was, but he's had some. Yeah, he had a some muscle. He had injuries. like an aneurysm in his shoulders. I don't know what it was. Hmm. Tom, Tommy, yes. two, two things about Jason Grilly, the best player of South Troy. One, I. Played with him 97 in Hawaii, and then I played with him at the end of his career. He, he signed with the pen that his dad gave him. He signed every contract from then on with the same pen. He had to have this pen. It's oh, wow. Got, it, it, so when we signed, we signed with the Braves together. He flew in, signed his contract. He had to have a certain pen, which I was like, okay, that's weird. I just give me a bic that's, and I'll sign whatever. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> and then two, he was pitching for the White Sox in spring training in 2004, Ozzie Gans first year. He gives up like a nine spot in the first inning. They go to take him out. Ozzy brings out sunscreen to the whole infield and is like, here, who needs oh sunscreen, God. boys? On the mound. <laughs> <laughs> so and then that. he became and then he became a closer and, and took off. But it was he, he, honestly, came, he came out and goes, Boys, you've been out here for a while. Here, who needs sunscreen? He had to spray sunscreen. He's like <laughs> spraying all the infielders down. He did it. It happened. Yeah. I was that would never fly now. They'd be like, oh, oh, oh. I got you. Wow, I Sticky like stuff. that. Can yeah, you imagine was, was... Ozzy coming? I, I would love to see it. Booty comes out and just globs sunscreen in everybody's hands. Here you go, guys. <laughs> Shave and wear your sunscreen, kids. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> like a teacher oh, or something. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. Your parent. That's hey, great. Tommy, great to see you, dude. Great to catch up. We appreciate the time, as always, man. Keep crushing it out there. Have fun. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it always. I need, I'm going to need some of that candy pop. I see the yeah. Twix one, by the way. Do yeah. you want? Yeah. Can, can we send you? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay, done. Done. All in on you it. can put it on the walls. <laughs> it's good. Stay. It's good, dude. It's addicting. Like, now you look at the nutrition. You're like 150 calories per serving. How many are in, How many are in a bag? About five. And you're like, okay, so that's 750 calories. <laughs> yeah, we're whole thing. Whole thing yeah, gone. I'm still, I'm Still with the, I still want all the bad food, man. They took it all away. Yeah. It's like you're working time. out. You're yeah. working out. It's fine. Yeah. After you get yeah. a good workout in, get after it. Shoot for the tie, kid. Yeah. Shoot for the tie. Work yeah. out. You'll, you love, you'll love it, Tommy. You'll love it. It yeah. slaps. We got you, know you. We got you. Perfect. Good to see you, man. We'll see you in a few weeks. Yes, sir. Awesome. Yes, sir. Shade. No problem. Don't forget yeah, to share. Right? <laughs> Cheers, dude. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you soon. I'll send all you right. a Cratch jersey, too. Jersey, Jersey, Jersey. <laughs> Do you have them lying around? Jerseys? Yeah. I played for like fourteen teams. There was only, there was only one thing I ever took from those teams. Jerseys. My jersey, every your hat. Time. And what hat, about the hats? hats? You're famous for the hats. Oh well, nobody wants my hats back. You get lice. Yeah, well, I need a dome on my high school field. Can I have a hat? <laughs> you, need, you need extra you need, I need extra a dome. game trash cans I know I need a dome to put over the field you would be the first high school team to have a dome <laughs> I wish <laughs> especially in Florida yeah oh, sure. he was good that was good was that did, we covered a lot of ground with him that was fun you did I still AJ's. feel like we're only touching scratching the surface with Tommy really I mean, what is, do we need to do coach us up I mean you played um, with him I'm trying I'm figuring it out I mean the the playoff story was is epic with him, and I wish he would have remembered it. Maybe memory's not his best suit, so you just gotta <laughs> we gotta we gotta like prime prime Tommy because he is just he's so awesome. He he would run out. He would like he said he would run out, and this dude threw an entire 
two liter of soda over our heads onto the field after a home run. And we were like, whoa, that's like super dangerous. And Tommy's like, yeah. He goes, these are my people. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he is okay. classic. Good news. One of a He's, kind. He, he will be on many, many more times with us. That Love is it. a promise. Okay. We're ready for our next guest on FT Live uh, from the Yankees organization here. Single A, Tampa, second year manager now. Um, always enjoy the conversation with her for me. Not sure if you guys have spoken with her yet, but excited to have Rachel Balkovac on with us right now. Rachel, great to see you. How you doing? Are, are you in Tampa right now or is your team on the road? No, we're in Tampa. Yeah, so nice. we're home. Great, great to see you. How's everything going so far this season? Oh, uh, it's season, you know, it's, um, it's exhausting. I'm tired. <laughs> I think we're all a little tired and hot now, but uh, overall got a little bit of a slow start, but we're, we're starting to turn around and it's just a good vibe in the clubhouse. You got sleep tips? Sleep tips? Yeah, well, I don't have a sleeping problem. So I, 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 a ball is sleepy all the time because you're always tired. You're on buses and but Tampa's nice. You guys have it made in Tampa. The facility's great, Because you right? commute everywhere. You guys play in Dunedin, Clearwater. You don't have to go anywhere. It's not like when I was in Fort Myers. We had to go and spend the night in, like, the, the Roach Motels. So she's got it made <laughs> no, in Tampa. She's in her yeah. own bed every night. No, this league is easy for the players. And when you're a coach, you still don't sleep that much. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not, not to take it away from the players. You know, they're tired, too, from playing. But also, uh, obviously, our work happens before and after the day. So we're uh, we have long hours and just um, – so yeah, but you're right. This league is incredibly easy. So we're we're fortunate in that way. And plus, right. you play in Legends Field. It's not like you guys are playing in Clinton, Iowa. I mean, you guys you guys have big league stadiums. I mean, I feel so bad for these kids and these coaches. You know, oh, the Florida State League was the greatest league in the world. You had no bus. The longest bus ride was like three hours. And and I mean, you're playing in big league spring training teams. They're so nice now. You also love Florida more than anyone well, on the point. planet. But that's true. Yeah, you. I think you should come talk Florida. to the players because they're complaining about being tired. I'm like, guys. Just wait until you're on the bus overnight for 12 hours because um, the Texas League, like I was in the Texas League in 2018, and that was just brutal, brutal. So we're uh, we're doing fine. Uh, the players are definitely getting all their sleep. The coaches get no sleep like normal, but that's that's normal. Tell me, tell me your schedule. Tell everybody your schedule because I tried to hook this interview up like a long time ago because I think you're like <laughs> – I think you are transcendent in this game. We'll get to all that. But, like, you are an absolute workhorse. And so tell us your schedule to figure out how lucky we are to actually have you on this show. <laughs> uh, I mean, during the week, it's just a it's a blur because of, you know, as you guys know, obviously you've been around for a long time, but the game has switched to, I think, used to be a little bit more, okay, show up, roll out the balls, we practice, we go home. But obviously there's a ton of work to be done for coaches – before the day, after the day, uh, mostly with video. So I'm, I'm usually, I don't know, I'm up around 7.38. I go train myself, I go work out myself, and then I'm pretty much at the park or, or at home doing some kind of video review or work uh, starting around 10.30 latest. Um, and then, like, as a manager, you know, I'm my door's open. And so at noon, there's a stream of people walking in and out and players that want to talk and whatever, which is great. Um, but but I got to have all my work done before then. So, um, but yeah, so it's pretty much like nonstop. And then we, thankfully, again, you guys, um, you didn't have to deal with this, but we have a month where you didn't get this opportunity, but we have Mondays off. So I get a little bit of a catch up day. So that's, that's the day that's today. So um, I get a little bit of a catch up day, but there's just so much, there's a lot of video, there's a lot of notes and, and um, assessments to be done pre and post day for the coaches. So that's kind of the schedule. Okay, yeah, yeah. you get Monday. You get every Monday off, right? So nice. Sunday night. Sunday night is party time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sunday night is again video review, <laughs> prepping for the next series, and uh, getting stuff done. But again, we didn't used to have the Monday off, so this is it. Always feels like a feels like a nice weekend for us. Okay, that's nice. Where do you guys play tomorrow? Or where, where, where's your game? No, at excuse home? me. We're at, we're not at home. We're still in Tampa. We're in Clearwater, so it's just really oh. a short drive down the road. Yeah, see, once again, that short drive. So nice. Easy. So nice. What's your – don't get, I don't want you to give away any Yankee secrets here, but what's the <laughs> one thing that you look for when you see a player? When they send you a player, they say, here's your roster, 
for 2023, what's the one thing you're looking at to say, okay, this guy has to have this to go to the next level? Position player, I'm assuming. Or pitcher. You can, give us, you can give us all uh, you can give us all the Yankee secrets. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, right. Um then you'll see me fired like tomorrow. Like I'm not. No, we don't we don't want we definitely don't want that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I would say like, you know, this is so cliche, but the number one thing would be like aptitude and, and willingness to learn um, just because any more. So obviously like it used to be where I think that the conversation was very much the biggest jump is from low A to, or high A to double A, right? Like those are the boys to the men, right? And now because you've cut out two levels of rookie league, it's like they go straight from a, a lot of our Latin American players, right? They go straight from the DR, they come over, they have one year of complex league and then they go to low A and they're facing like, we're facing a ton of rosters with like all college dudes. Like, oh, that shortstop started at Tennessee and that guy was at Texas State and that guy. And they're just older and, and more mature and more experienced. And so it's a huge learning curve. And these guys might have tools, you know, and they've, they've got they've got power or they've got speed or, you know, they've got, they've got a glove or whatever it is, but you still have to be thinking, you know? And so I think that this is so cliche, but it's, it's the intangibles. It's like the biggest thing. Um, assuming that you have some level of talent, which if you're, you know, you get to a full season affiliate, like they do have some level of talent and their ability to learn um, and learn quick is probably the biggest factor for guys moving up the levels. Have you advanced anybody that hasn't had that? Have you been, and I know it's not ultimately up to you, but like they're taking your reports. They're taking the scout, you know, the player development reports and like, wow, this guy is just too physically gifted for this level, but his aptitude isn't quite there yet. Yes. Yeah. But with, which happens less and less as they go up the levels, right? Like your talent is going to take you so far. And if you're uber talented, you hit the ball 120 and you can make contact sometimes. Okay. Maybe you'll make it to the higher levels, but it happens less and less because the competition gets better. So at some point you have to have some kind of aptitude to learn and apply your skills. Um, but yeah, that, that, that happens, especially at our level because your talent will carry you past a certain point, but as soon as soon as like moving gets a little better on pitches or, you know, from pitching standpoint, the hitters get a little bit better, they get more disciplined, right? So then they're not swinging at all the shape, the stuff that you're throwing. You know, you so I think it's it'll carry you to a certain point. And yeah, at our level at low A, yeah, OK, like you could have a bunch of talent or be really toolsy and still make it to high A, make it to double A. But at some point, that's going to run out. You can say you, it. You can, you can say, say bad it. words. It's OK. This one's digital. Yeah, we're not on linear TV. So you're good. Yeah, I'm still I this clubhouse speak as, as you all know. So no, that's why we're here. Like literally one of our catchphrases is the world is our clubhouse <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah we want people to just talk how they would normally talk i'm with you go ahead Kratzy. no so take us into that clubhouse take us into and it makes me laugh because i mean this is just completely just me being an idiot but the tampa tarpons when they came out i honestly thought it said the tampa tampons i and know it, and have you, you ever and made like that a million mistake? other people like of all the teams you know you're just like shit like like cash called me and I'm like, could you just have put me with a different team or like what, you know, it's like anyone else except for this, like Tarpons, it's just too easy. You know, it is, it is too easy, but take us into that clubhouse, take us into what kind of culture you as a manager want that team to have, because in, in sometimes in the big leagues, it's not quite your, you know, it's maybe the superstars culture. What kind of culture do you want to have? for those boys that are coming from so many different walks of life and everything? So, um, yeah, it's, that's a great question. So there's like, there's a, for me, it's a, I would say a 50, 50, like blend, right? So these guys are so young in their careers and they don't know how young they are. They don't know how, you know, like this is still low a it's, it's not like, there's still many checkpoints for them to pass. And, but when they get here, like I said, right, they're coming from the complex and now this feels like, and they're playing at, like, like you said, Legends Field, like they're playing, they're playing at GMS, they're, they're playing in this great stadium and they're traveling around to all these other major league stadiums and they feel like they've made it. Um, and so it's just a reality check that you have to give them as a coach um, and all of our coaches collectively, like the, the best gift that I can give them is keeping them accountable to say to what they say they want to do, um, which is to get better and to achieve their dreams, whether that's, you know, 
in a micro level that's moving up one level, but also getting the big leagues. And so it's like, what's my style or what's the culture? It's just like high accountability. Like I don't, I don't let them get away with a lot, honestly. Um, but at the same time, like we've got a pickleball court in our clubhouse. We've got a ping pong table in our clubhouse. We've got loud music at all times. We have, we have fun, um, but not at the expense of getting stuff done. So I think that it's high accountability, but also hopefully there's, there's opportunities for them to, okay, relax, have fun, enjoy themselves with their teammates. Um, at the same time, like they've just got a long ways to go, you know? So you got to make them shave all the time. Yeah. Is that a pain <laughs> in the butt? Um, no, they just, you know, they do it. Like, I don't really have to say much to them usually, you know, but if I ever do, I'm like, Hey, like, do you play for the Yankees? And, and you know, and they always fall for it. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, Oh, I just thought you play for the Diamondbacks Cause you got a bunch of shit on your face. <laughs> you know, that's a great line, but, uh, you but, they, tell but they, that they're line. good about it. It's just, it's the Yankees culture. <laughs> so it's not, I'm not driving that. Obviously it's what the whole, the expectation is for everyone. So it's an easy sell. That's a great line though. Cause we had Canely on right before and he said, you know, occasionally uh, Boone will say to one of the guys like, Hey, maybe a little too much. Just go get rid of that right now. So he's, I don't know. That's, that is the line. Oh, you play for the Yanks. <laughs> yeah. Shave yeah. your face. Shave your face. <laughs> I like yeah. it. Yeah. I usually am like, yeah, you can be, you can be with the A's on, on Monday when you're not at the field. And as soon as you walk into the field, you play for the Yankees. So it's like, yep. you know, they, they're pretty good about it though. I like that. Okay. So Rachel, I want to get into your story, of course, um, with, with these guys sitting near me, I interviewed you um, actually briefly at the futures game, which there's a story to that, that they would like, but um, last year, and we spoke about the groundbreaking that you're doing in the sport, um, what you want to do. There, there's actually a lot, even, you know, aspirations of, of what you want to do next in baseball, which I thought that was just as fascinating as well as some of the answers that, that you gave me in our conversation. So uh, first off, just wanted to get your state of the game as far as female participation and opportunities for women in sports. My take is, are you asking for my hot take? Yeah, like where we're at. I mean, I asked you about it a year ago. So like at, the more that you're in this game, I wanted to get your your sense of like, do you feel like like the big picture? We're evolving. We are getting, there are going to be more Rachel Balkovec stories, more Kim Ang stories in this game. Do you feel like progress is being made? Um, you know, there aren't going to be many Kimming stories anymore, you know, because Kim has spent 30 years in the game earning that spot, you know? And so, and she was like, so under the radar. I mean, she was, she was a, a rogue hire in the early two thousands by the Yankees, you know? Um, so there aren't many Kimming stories. Like she was so under the radar for a long time and had to claw her way. There's no way when she first started that she would even be considered for a general manager position. Um, and same thing with me is like, there aren't any, there aren't going to be any my, my stories, you know, so there aren't going to be any stories where I had to change my name, my resume just to get a damn phone interview, you know, so there's, there's not going to be any of that, which is positive. And also um, I'm a big, like, I'm a, I'm a realist about things. Like there are people being um, brought into the game who have no experience, you know, and so who are asking, to, who are being asked to be a part of the game, who, um, have maybe not had the experience to prepare them to be successful in the role or to prepare them to just stick around and keep their jobs, you know? And so um, just like with anything, I think that the pendulum has swung very far. And where I used to say, you know, when young women would ask me uh, for advice, I used to say, you know, you're going to have to work harder than everybody. You're going to have to be willing to work for free, go anywhere in the world, get all the experience that you can. Like you're going to be able to scratch and claw your way into the game um, and now I have to literally counsel them and say, hey, you are going to get recruited. You're going to get a job like you put your resume in. They're going to move it to the very top of the pile. You'll get an interview. You are going to get a job. But it's a matter of how good you're going to be when you get there. So make sure you do the internships, maybe do a college gig first, like try to try to get your feet wet with some experience before you enter professional baseball where, you know, the expectations are a little bit higher um, and you're working with higher level players in some instances. And so. Um, it, the pendulum has swung. And I think that there's, th what I will say now is there's definitely opportunity. And I think that's a positive thing. Um, if the most qualified person gets the job. 
Yeah, but is it enough? Like I feel, I hear your, I hear your angst, and I know from talking to you, like how how much you care for these guys and what you know. Your knowledge is <laughs> through the roof. But is it enough? Like, are we are we not doing enough? Like, pop off about it. Like, tell tell us what what you think needs to be done. Are we not doing enough for what? Are are we not doing enough in in baseball because? Like, like I, I go back to your story of, you kind of mentioned it about your resume. Mm -hmm. Tell us your story about your resume, how you had done all these things. And yet you, I'll let y'all, I'll let you say, you, you tell a story. Cause I think it's a fascinating story about your resume, how you changed, how you had to change it. Yeah. I'll tell I'll tell the short version. Cause it would take me like six hours, but basically I was, um, <laughs> This was 2010. I was at LSU as a graduate assistant strength and conditioning coach, and I wanted to get into professional baseball. I'll never forget the day that um, I was looking for jobs online for professional baseball, and I there were there were no women's names like anywhere, anywhere. I was like Googling all this stuff, and I was just like, man, where are all the women? I was so naive, so naive. And I walked into my boss's office, who, was a, who happened to be a woman at LSU. She was the um, co-director of strength and conditioning. And I said, Mel, I said, you know, uh, are there any women working in professional baseball as strength coaches? And she, she just laughed at me. She was like, there are no women working in any professional sports as a strength coach. Like, what are you saying? I was so naive. So, and again, being naive, I was like, Oh, hmm, okay. And I just went back to it and I started applying just like, Oh, well, why wouldn't they hire me? Right. I'm at LSU. I'm working with baseball and softball. I'd already done some internships leading up to that point. Um, and I had a little bit of an issue, like not issue, but I, you know, I had a little trouble, but as a young person, you just think, you know, you have to work to get the job. So I kept applying and applying. And so the Cardinals actually reached out to LSU uh, football strength and conditioning and, and asked for somebody who would want to be an intern. And they said, well, you know, we've got this great person, catcher in college, like all this, you know, whatever. Um, and it's a she, like, what do you think? And the Cardinals took a leap of faith and hired me as an intern. So I got to do that. And then I decided to go back to school. It's kind of a long story, but basically I got out of the Cardinals internship, which internships end. So it was over. They were like, yeah, we'll call you in five months if we have anything. So you can't rest your rest on your laurels there. So I went and um, basically decided to go back to school, moved to Phoenix. And I applied for like, I, I believe it was 12, something like that, 12 jobs the following spring and, and got crickets. But again, I was thinking, oh, you know, well, it's hard to get a job in professional baseball. And so then finally, long story short, an organization called me that spring and said, hey, you know, are you still available? Someone quit in spring training. And you know, spring training is crazy. So they were like desperate. They're like, woman, I don't care. Hire, <laughs> get somebody in here. So he wanted to hire me, but basically ended up, long story short, calling me back after several weeks and um, just saying like, hey, I just want to let you know what you're up against. I really want to hire you. But um, our administration just said that we're not going to hire a woman. And that was kind of the first time that I was brought off of my, away from my naivete. And then he also said, he was like, I've got more bad news. Um, I actually called around to 10 other organizations that I know um, have positions posted and they are also not willing to hire a woman. And it was like this moment of truth where I had to go, okay, well, either I'm going to essentially give up and go work for women's sports. Cause that's what the normal is right or i just i'm going to keep my putting my head down so then at that point i picked up another internship with arizona state baseball um and softball working for them for free and then long story short again the chicago white Sox actually uh gave me an internship to work with their fall league which was um babysitting for free and then uh the cardinals hired me back full time but in the midst of that i was so desperate that I turned my name from Rachel to Ray on my resume just to get a phone call. Cause I figured people were basically seeing my name and not even calling me. So I changed my name from Rachel to Ray. I changed um, NCAA division one softball catcher to just NCAA division one catcher um, and just made everything gender neutral. And I did get a phone call, which turned into a really awkward phone call very quickly once he found out that I was a woman. Um, but then, yeah, but, I mean, very shortly after that, I kind of felt bad because I was technically lying on my resume and I switched it back. But all that to say, wasn't really fruitful, but I was so desperate that I felt like that was the only way to get a look for my resume. And times have changed. <laughs> times have really changed since then. 
So I'm not saying either is good, but um, I think the original question that led me down this long path of talking about my journey was, um, are we doing enough? I think MLB is doing a phenomenal job of creating opportunities. I think MLB is doing a phenomenal job of getting uh, women's resumes in front of the right people with teams. Um, I think that we might have gone at this point a little too far. I, and I, I'm okay saying that publicly of just saying, you know, I talked to many women and they go, well, how can I possibly get into the game? I'm like, well, did you apply? And they're like, oh, no. I'm like, well, if you don't apply and you're not applying yourself, then I can't help you. But I think the pendulum has swung so far that, um, you know, we might be inviting people in that maybe aren't ready for the opportunity. However, there's plenty of, of great candidates that have been accepted into jobs as well. So um, now I've gone on a, a long tangent, but I think we're, we've covered quite a bit there. No, that's great. No, you're that's exactly that's that's the story I wanted to hear because I, I, I love that story. Are we able to see you in a big league uniform as a manager in the next five years? Uh, oh, no. Ten? Straight up. No, you'll see me hopefully as a general manager in the next 10 years. Ooh, <laughs> but, uh, no, my, my goals are my goals definitely will probably lead me to the front office sooner rather than later. But um, the managing role, to be honest with you, is probably because the I think um, – we're just at a we're at a turning point or we're just in the middle of, uh, as you all know, like this big tech explosion, like anywhere from five to seven years ago, I guess. Um, and that's invited different candidates into the game who are from different backgrounds and managing where, as you know, as you all know, managing used to be the strategic. I'm writing the lineup and I'm doing the matchups and I'm doing this. And like now there's a lot more based around pitch counts like. I don't have a lot to do with what pitchers coming in the game because they're all in pitch counts. Right. And that's not, that's not a secret. Um, the, the role of the manager has changed significantly since, you know, a lot of it's based on playing time or pitch counts or whatever it might be. And so they wanted somebody with more of a coaching background to be in the manager role. And I think that is, is fine for me and it's fine for what the Yankees need at this time. Um, I don't know if that will lead me down the path of being a major league manager, manager. And frankly, I think there are just other people who are better suited for that role at this point, although that could change. Um, and I think that also my aspirations are, are going to lead me into the front office at some point. So you'd rather be a general manager than a manager. So yeah, that's I, smart. I, it, exactly. That's because I remember. they have all the power now. It used to be the other way around. Now the GMs tell the managers what to do. And they're like, yeah, hey, you're not going to play your guy. Guess what? We'll find someone that will see you. You got Smart. it, AJ. Well, well played. I mean, the well manager, played. trust me, I don't want to take it away from anyone. And I know like just how impactful like Boone is, you know, it's just like there, it's a really impactful, critical role. Um, and also uh, cash gets the players, you know, or how you could say like the, the owner and the GM are, are, you know, pulling the strings um, and giving you the players and telling you what to do a lot of times. Although, again, that, that changes so much from organization to organization. But uh, the way that I see it, I want to be the head coach. And I, I think that the head coach, in many cases, is more the general manager than it is the manager. Have you, what's the last conversation you've had with Kim Ang? Oh, I mean, it's been a while. Kim and I met originally at the winter meetings, I think, in 2017. Um, but we both went a bit a little busy a little busy since then. So busy, <laughs> I think yeah. I ran into her at winter meetings last year for like five seconds, but I haven't I haven't talked to her in quite a while. Would you be curious to quiz her on how you know her experience has gone? I mean, obviously, especially this year from a performance basis, the Marlins look good right now. And I will yeah. say, I mean, when you come in as a front office member to take over, right? As she has as the GM, and and you were kind of like transitioning and then um, replacing a regime, right? Where before that, I mean, it included Derek was a big part of, of the last organization and that run there. She's now putting her stamp on the organization and you're seeing it really work out. Yeah. I mean, I think obviously when you take the role as a general manager, you're given like, what would you say two or three years to make some significant change at the major league level with winning just straight up. And so obviously they're, they're looking pretty good. And, um, I know that they've also made some moves like behind the scene with hiring Aza Campo, who's somebody who I worked with with the Astros and who's a really talented um, person to have around. And so I think that, you know, it's just interesting to watch organizations evolve. I, I watch organizations change and evolve in some way, in the same way that some people, some people watch like the team, you know, the actual like playing of the game. And I'm watching like, oh, the minor league levels, you know, who are they hiring as their coordinators? Who are they hiring um, to do Latin, Latin American operations? Like, 
it's such a, as you all know, it's like it's the, the major league team and what's going on is the tip of the iceberg for a lot of other things that are happening. Um, and that's what I think is so interesting about professional baseball specifically. Do you feel like, like when you meet, when you're a player and you meet a Canadian player, people are like, Oh, I know this guy I played from him. He's from Canada. Like, do you feel like every woman in baseball, people are like, oh, you know, Janie, right? Like, no, I don't know. Like, do you get that a lot? Literally exactly like that. Uh, but it used to, it actually used to be like, oh, yeah, there's like three of us. So I do know her. And now it's it's so many that I, I really haven't met all of them. That's a good, that's dude, a that, good sign. That is a good sign. That that's part, a good sign. Right? That's a good step. I don't think I don't have any doubt that there are opportunities for women now. There's no shortage of opportunities. Yeah. I will say there's no shortage of opportunities for women to interview now. Like your your name is going to go at the top of the pile, likely. Um, and again, that's there's just like anything else that brings a lot of positive and opportunities for people who um, have worked to get them and opportunities for people who deserve them. And that also brings in some situations where maybe they get opportunities before they're ready. And so I think you guys keep saying, oh, that's great. And it is great. It's great that people aren't being discriminated against as much. You know, I don't want to, again, I don't want to assume anyone's situation. Um, it is it is great that people aren't facing the same discrimination that I faced or, or that Kim likely faced um, on her route or Gene Afterman, you know, um, or Raquel, like the, the, I call them the three queens. You know, they've been around for 30 years. So I can't even imagine what their experience was like getting into the game. Um, so it's great. It is really great that people aren't facing the same level of discrimination that I faced. That's great. Last thing I want to ask you is when, when we spoke last year, I was like, are you, I, I kind of phrase it like, are you sick of, you know, having to talk about it and be one of the faces of a change in baseball where the resume doesn't have to get changed to a male on it for you to get an opportunity are you sick of talking about it? Or I remember last year you were like, oh, hell no. I want everyone to know about what I went through, you know, what, where we should be as a game. Do you, do you feel the same way? Um, I don't, it's, I don't have an option, you know, like, I don't think I can't turn that down to talk about it. You know, I don't, I definitely don't want to put myself in the same category as this person, but I just don't think like Jackie Robinson didn't have a choice. Like when you sign on the dotted line to do something like that, or, for me personally, like this, like it's part of the responsibility that you accept when you accept a role like that. You know, it's just it's not something that I can just be like, I don't feel like it, you know, like, eh, yeah, I don't feel like it. You know, it's just it's part of the job. And um, it's it's a it's a blessing. Like it's not it's a responsibility. It's a blessing. I know like Billie Jean King always says pressure is a privilege. Like you get put in this situation, you better handle it right. And you better be willing to speak up. You better be willing to do interviews on your off day when you wouldn't need to do work or whatever, whatever it is. Like you don't get to say no um, for me personally. Well, it's not like a clubhouse post game and, you know, players like, eh, I don't want to talk. Someone else will do it. Like, so not You're many people that can relate with what yeah. you went through. Right. So yeah, yeah. I, I like it. Uh, appreciate it. Always great to catch up with you, Rachel. Keep kicking ass there. And uh, AJ, any, any Florida tips yeah. for dealing with 95 degrees She's every used day? To it by now. She's used to it. She's used to it. Just get stay hydrated. Hydrate the night before for tomorrow. Get out of, get get out of yeah. Florida. No. Hey, by the way, when you become a GM, yes, I will be your manager. So thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll accept your resume and I'll, I'll look it over. So we'll, okay. we'll talk I'll about it. I'll make sure I put my correct name on it too. You want a manager? Yeah. Why not? Okay. She'll, get, she'll hire me. Why not? How would I say, like blood. she said, I can't say no to that. <laughs> you know what the problem is with him is, are you going to listen? Yes, I listen. You're going to listen? you. I listen to people that tell the truth. You're going to listen to the front office? Yes. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> His listen. face got so red. I will Pinocchio listen. Sitting I will next listen. To me. It doesn't mean I'll do it, but I'll listen. You can't. He, you're very red right now. As long as we have a, <laughs> as long as we have a mature conversation, mm -hmm. and is it, it is explained to me properly why she wants to do the job and why she wants to make the lineup the way she does. Yep. Then I'll only argue a little bit. <laughs> hey, it's just like the movie. Like, if you want to play someone that I don't, I'll just trade him. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. See, there you have it. I would sign up to just just to be in the in the room for that. I would love just to because, hear these conversations. Just because you like to argue and I don't doesn't mean that I like you to argue. You love to argue. You you're <laughs>
Rachel, great to talk to you. Enjoy the day and and keep kicking ass. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Rachel. you, Rachel Bakovec in the Yanks org, coach in Tampa. Ray, I'm not just Ray. It's Ray now. What? Ray. You're giving her a nickname? Well, she nicknamed herself when she did it on her resume. She was Ray. Oh, right, right. Ray, yes. like in uh, Star Wars, Ray. Good. All right, so um, we're a little tight on time, but I do want to get like maybe two things in hot corner wise. Um, also, as we start hot corner, Ryan Helsley is on the injured list with a right yeah, forearm. Thanks, Ryan. That's why he didn't pitch. When I asked him why he didn't pitch, now we know. Right. Well, I didn't want to have just said that. that. Yeah. <laughs> that. I'm thinking like as the journal, I like, should I have said, are you hurt? I just, I feel like. Well, I asked him that. I was like, are you okay? And yeah. He's like, yeah. He, said, yeah. he said, yes. I think we caught timing where it's like they put him on or was, did the Cardinals know he was coming on? And they're like, after he's on FT, we'll. I don't think the Cardinals are that slick. Oh, you don't think they're paying attention to that? All right, well, well, he's out now. So hopefully, you know, get back on that damn field soon, Ryan. Um, and we'll have him on next time around and we can ask him about it. So, okay, for Hot Corner, I'm going to pick two, okay? okay? So I've got – let's start with Wait, college hold on. baseball. Hold on, let's have an argument. Okay, that, as long as we're touching on that one, then I'm in. Oh, you wanted to decide which two? Why uh, that's why I brought it up. So number college one baseball, in mind yes. is college baseball. You've been itching to talk about it. So this yes. is your time right now. Yes. Talk about college baseball and most most importantly from this weekend that got a lot of heat. 156 pitches. Don't care. From one human being. Don't care. This kid right here, Quinn Matthews, mm -hmm. senior. Was drafted in the 19th round last year by mm -hmm. the Rays. Turned it down. Why did he turn it down? To come back to Stanford and pitch him to the College World Series. He's a senior. They're down 1-0 to Texas. His team needs him. 16 punches, 156 pitches. Guess what they did? They won the game. It's his decision. The coach, I guarantee you, said, how you feel? He's like, I'm pitching. And I know there's a bunch of people. John Heyman was in there. Evan Grant was in there. I don't know how I feel about this. John Heyman said, oh, this is, this is horrible. They did this to this kid. Listen, this kid's a senior. He goes to Stanford, which is a very intelligent college, very hard to get into, super smart, no academic anything except for you got to be really smart to go there. This kid made a decision on what he wanted to do, and I have absolutely no problem with it because this is what he wanted to do when he was dealing. Let it ride. I watched Paul Skeens, the guy who's going to be the number one overall pick, top five overall pick for LSU through 124. His last pitch was 101 miles an hour. Chase Dolander, supposed to be another high pick for Tennessee, threw 110 yesterday in elimination games. Guess what? These kids can do it if we let them. But we don't let them enough. We're so worried about, oh, man, I got to – oh, no, he's going to throw 100 pitches. God forbid. Dude, some of these kids can physically do it. This kid went out and did it for a squad. And guess what they have now? Fresh bullpen for a winner-take-all to go to Omaha. So, Mr. Matthews, freaking tip my cap to you. And I don't care what these people say, dude. You do you. And if you can do it, freaking do it. And the coaching staff. Coaching right? staff, so too. 100%. Let's go. Let's that, ride, boys. That was important as well. Yep. Let's ride. Kratz, if your starter's going, if your starter's at 140-something, all right, skip. Just let me get a couple more batters. For, we're in the ninth. There's one out. I mean, the the funny tweet that I saw from last night, you know, Cyrus, I think, is going to join us soon um, on the show, like this week, I think. Uh, 15 great writer for the athletic 15 strikeouts. And this was when he was at 128 pitches. Awesome performance by Quinn Matthews for standard his major league organization. will get him down to 75 per start soon enough. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> there you have it. That's a great tweet. I don't think, I don't think it's just about the one game. I don't think it's just about the one game injuries happen. No matter what, all these pitch count restrictions, guys have injuries all the time to me. I think we got to try it out. We got we can't go 156, and then five days later he's going 156 again. No, you can't do that. I, I think that's – but it's not – where we're at with the 75 per start piggyback starters is not doing it. We didn't swing – Rachel talked about swinging the pendulum. We haven't swung the pendulum back towards getting guys healthy again. But what we do have is we have a kid who – absolutely competed he came back for his senior year yes if he had gotten drafted in the first round he probably wouldn't have come back 
but this is what they're doing. Like it's okay to create a culture of winning. We just, it's ironic. We talked about uh, the win doesn't matter. The stat win doesn't matter, but to create a culture of winning is a huge thing that will pay dividends in these, in these boys' lives, in these young men's lives past the game. Cause you know what? This kid might not ever make it, but it's not because he threw 156 pitches. Everyone's like, well, Johan Santana threw his no hitter and, you know, he threw 150 whatever pitches. Johan Santana had 2,000 innings on his arm at that point when he had done that. Like, he was towards the end. You know, everyone wants to cherry pick situations. To me, the part that, yes, John Heyman was correct in the sense that all oh, the coaches need to, you got to be in that situation. The coaches are the adults and they do need to make sure kids don't get hurt. But at this point in the season, you know what that kid has. You know what kind of person he is. You know what kind of work he's put in. Let it ride. Because we have way too many helicopter parents, helicopter coaches, and helicopter rule makers that are for the safety of the kids. You know what? How about the kids try to win and the coaches coach? Uh, Word. Yeah, there's a great comment from Carrot in the chat. He goes, AJ with this combo is killing his managerial chances with Rachel after she was talking about how pitch <laughs> crowns are a thing, sadly. It's a good Listen, line. I agree. But, dude, the kid made a decision to come back for this moment, and he did it. Mm -hmm. Let the kid enjoy them. And if he says he's fine, like Kratz said, he, 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 he can rest after this is over. Right. A lot of pitchers nowadays also in the bigs will just say when they're done. You know how that is. Oh, There's know. a lot. Most it. pitchers will be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Dude that's, like I'm we good. already talked about. I'm a dude that wants the ball, wants to get that hit in the ninth inning. I want those dudes. Mm -hmm. This guy's a dude. He didn't got the best stuff in the world. I watched that game. I mean, I couldn't make it till the end, but I watched the beginning of it. I mean, he's 90, but phew, good yeah. change up. Like he's, he, you know what he's doing? He got drafted by the Rays. They'd figure something out and get him, get him to be an opener for three innings <laughs> and figure but, out how to do it. This is my thing. Why can't we have, a mix. You I think it, you it's, should. it's too much cookie cutter. There might be that guy who really is only good, you know, his five and dive or whatever, right? He, he truly runs out of gas. And then there are some guys that you can say, you know what? We're going to raise this guy a little bit differently in the minors. Everyone's minor the leagues. same. Analytics. Every program in the minors is very similar. Everyone's the same. Dusty Scott. Baker, though, I had a talk with him. Mm -hmm. Dusty Baker, I did the Astros game. I know like, where you're going to go, Kratz. What? You're going to go to the wins? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm okay. not. I'm not. I'm going to, I was going to say, who does, who does AJ bring up when he talks about ex pitchers that he played with? Early. Does he bring up the dude that's like, oh man, I, I remember when he came up, he was throwing 105. No, the Bobby guys Jeff. that he brings up, <laughs> Freddie Garcia, Mark Burley, dudes that took the ball, guys that Ozzy brought up, like, hey, Bobby, he's the guy I want to have the ball because he, he wants to win. That's where it's at. That's the ultimate. That's the ultimate gamer, ultimate teammate, ultimate in the end, the winners. So you know what? If this kid doesn't have the best stuff, I guarantee you there is a team out there that will draft him because of what he did in this game. Mm -hmm. Well said. All right, yeah. let's hit it. We're over time. So let's hit up our BetMGM locks. We'll do a quick recap. Because it wasn't pretty, except for Kipnis, who wins everything, apparently. He <laughs> nailed it on his Atlanta money line. And it was it was minus two hundo. He wasn't going out on a limb. Mm. But, hey, 200 to play to win a hundo. Mm. It's, he knows the odds. Money's money. It's real. The rest of us lost. I got hooked. Oh, Crouch passed four. me again. I feel, I feel good about money. Oh, on, on bags? Yeah. I got, I got bullied into it, but you weren't here. That's okay. Stop. Your bet MGM locks for Monday are... Madam going first? Yeah. I have a parlay. Uh, Reds, Royals, under nine and a half. It's a lot of runs. I think it's nine and a half or eight and a half. Either way, it's still under. And Zach Grinke, three, three plus Ks for a parlay. Mm. 200 uh, to win 220. It's plus 110. I, I, the, the Reds, Grinke owns right-handed hitters, and the Reds are right-hand heavy. Uh, neither team scores a ton of runs, especially in Kauffman. The balls, they're not playing in the Great American Small Park anymore. Uh, so I think that should be a, not a lot of runs and Grinky dominates righties and the Reds are right hand loaded. 
So Ellie's not going to hit two homers tonight. It's fine. He hit two solo homers. He's not right handed. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> That's, so I, I got to follow that because I've got Reds money line to win. I got okay. the Reds to win the game. Um, the pitching, I mean, cranky numbers wise hasn't been great. I like what you're talking about. I mean, he's at a four and a half. Luke Weaver's over six, but Royals offense is bad. Yeah. Eight runs in the last five games. And also with Granky, the reason I've got the dub is, yeah, I could see it being low scoring. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. I could see it not. Also, my, my big thing is the Royals bullpen is bad too. Yeah, but it's, I think Granky will give him five or six, and like I said, he'll dominate yeah. the righties because the Reds they are right handed. Granky's not going deep into most outings. He, but all yeah, he needs to do is give me five. six. He can give you five. Six. Oh, anyway, yeah, I, I got the Reds coming off their high of the Dodgers and the Cardinals staying high, and they are a much better team at this point right now than the Royals. So at plus a hundo. With Weaver against Granky, I was like, I think they can hang around early on to be able to punish the bullpen later. Kratzy? Yeah, you got that at plus 100. and But you you must have changed the line because it, it's down to, I think it's minus 120 or 110 now. So No way. I'll get it by the time you get your pick done. You're a line, you're a line changer. You wake up early. You get things done. No, I usually don't, thing. but I took a red eye. You're right. It's, 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 it's even money now. Well, it's, it's minus 110. Yep. They got the game as a pick them now. So. Boom, got it in early. Get your picks in in the mornings, folks. Nice job. I'm going another parlay. I had a couple I was looking at. Giants and Rockies was an intriguing one for me, but I ended up going with Paxton versus Siebold. Siebold only needs to give me three-plus Ks. That's an easy hit for him. Paxton got it at seven. Seven plus Ks and it's paying me 120. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 400 I lost and got bullied into putting 400 down on Friday. I'm going to put it back down to win four to win 480. Now nah, we're your friends, yeah. But I like that. I like that. By the way, you've been listening to Lucy too much because she thought that was her lock of the day was seven and a half with Paxton. Was it mm-hmm. today? That's really good recall. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was today. Today. Oh, today. 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 Okay. Today. You know, she's like, if you're riding the Red Sox and James Paxton with me over seven and a half. No. Kratz is on it. But I mean, pretty good. Lucy. Yeah, Lucy today. was on point. She got the Jordan homer. So she did. I will give her that. Right before he got hurt, too. Yeah. So it's uh, time to swing for the fences on BetMGM. It's a new MLB free to play game for sweet prizes. Here's how you make it happen you log into the app on iOS or Android. And play the BetMGM MLB free-to-play game. And that goes until September 7th, 2023. You'd be a, you're a batter. You pick an area of the strike zone. And depending on the area of the zone that you pick, you'll either get single, double, triple, homer, or pop out. And you receive the prize associated with that type of hit. You can play once per day. Prizing must be used on MLB. It expires in 24 hours. Always bet responsibly. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. I'll do this actually before slap hands and and before fair territory which is up there now on podcast um i wanted to shout out uh a loyal listener what you're looking at me like i'm about to do i don't know what you're wrong. gonna say i'm i'm, I'm listening intently well, well he's saying. got a funny uh twitter handle uh and i'll go back and forth with him sometimes on some things especially west coast baseball labong james is his oh yeah I've seen uh, that. you've seen <laughs> yeah um, but he's like, he's said this a few for a few of his starts. And now I'm like, all right, we've hit a point. I got to shout him out. Cause we haven't really talked about him. Bobby Miller is doing some special shit on the mound for the Dodgers. And it's a, one of those, where would they be too? Because mm-hmm. Kershaw has been great. Gonsolin has been okay. Urias is out. May is out. Thor is broken. Thor's on the Phantom DL. You he's said. on the Phantom IL. A lot of the other youngsters for them are either hurt or haven't performed well. And then there's Bobby Miller. Holy awesome. shit. I mean, even like one of the quotes I was looking at Dave Roberts from the weekend because he shoved against the Phils. He was like, we certainly bet on the talent, but he's performed better than he did in the minor leagues. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, the Dodgers ERA is, as a team right now is 4-5-2, 22nd in baseball. That is that is not Dodger-like for them. So I'm, I'm doing one of those, where would they be without this kid with the high 90 sinker? And they said they that he reshaped his slider so that it could play off the fastball more like they, and that's the part of the development with the Dodgers because they draft well, but then they develop well because mm-hmm. they've got this kid looking like a star right now. He's a man. He's yeah. pitching great. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Diamondbacks, we didn't mention three and a half games ahead of the Dodgers. Just yeah, we Easiest did. win of the year 
If you watch the pre-year predictions, over-unders, yeah. easiest win of the year, the Diamondbacks were 73 wins, and we were all like way over that. And mm-hmm. they're going to blow that number out of the water the way they're playing right now. Unless mm-hmm. something crazy happens, they're going to blow that number out. They're division contenders uh, they right now. win that division the way yeah. everyone else is playing. Let's slap hands. Well, it looks like we know who wants to go first. <laughs> who am I? Uh, Whit Merrifield. I'm going to be Whit on the first tee of his golf outing because Florida whooped that ass. So Brady Singer won his bet against Whit Merrifield and went to South Carolina. They played in the college regional and Florida f- f- swept them away. So I couldn't find my Gator baseball jersey, so I had this basketball jersey handle. Handed you like that jersey the, the gator print on it yeah the gator yeah. print is cool i, don't so, know. I had it. this handy yeah it's it's yes but oh yeah, stop you know that you, crack, you know crack, you know how no crack, oh, no 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 i'm sick that, i'm out tomorrow all right great what better show uh <laughs> soon by the way are you hosting i hope so okay uh yeah so wit good luck i can't wait to see you in orlando we're rocking that gator jersey and also, speaking of Gators, Andrew McCutcheon, hit yes. the cap, brother. You're going to Florida. Your 2,000th career hit. Welcome to the club, Kratz. You can welcome to a different club. I didn't no, do anything in 2,000 times in the big leagues. I didn't even <laughs> get. I didn't even get in 2,000 games. Not even at 2,000 at bats. So that is awesome. the cap. Yes. Do you know who is? So it was against the Mets. It was against Carrasco. Do you know who his first hit was against? I should, I should know this. I, I should know well, this. I'll I was... give the team is the Mets. Yes, you're Matt not going to get the player. No, um, I wasn't trying to like trick you. Oh. I was just saying it was cool that it was Mets and Mets. Oh. Mike Pelfrey. Oh, yeah. Wichita State blast from the past. Blast from the past. He was He was coaching at Wichita State. What was that? Mike Pelfrey would do this like weird when he was when he would pitch. He'd do this weird like <laughs> nervous cough. <laughs> really? <laughs> there's. <laughs> there's I actually I get that. There's one or two guys that I worked with back in my TV days who would um, do like a, a lot, like a weird, almost like they had something stuck in their throat right before the show started. Scotch, 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 scotch is good. Like Anchorman. Is that what? How you're... now, brown cow? How <laughs> now, brown cow? I'm like, are are you nervous? What's going on? Mm-hmm. So, all right, I get it with Pelf. Good stuff. Uh, Brats, what you got on your? What, oh, what's the dome for my, my lid? Yeah. The old school Blue Jays, probably AJ is the only one that would probably remember this mm-hmm. old school one of the Frank Thomas, of, Vernon Wells. Vernon Wells that was my time. Hat. Now, this is technically a minor league hat because I wasn't in the big leagues when they had this, but I got invited to the fall league to catch bullpens essentially. I was on the team, but I never played shocker. And so I got to have <laughs> I've j i have just found it today. It's a big league hat, but never wore it in a big league game. During my flat brim hat days in middle school or high school, my go-to was that logo, but it was a gray, gray blue right jays. I wasn't at the game, so I was allowed to wear it. Yeah, yeah, that was, brawn. that was yeah, looking that was like vanilla ice. Yeah. Now there was flow coming out. <laughs> so, but yes, uh, let's go blue jays. Lastly, because we're way play. over time. Oh. Um, fair territory. Catch it now, Ken Rosenthal, who's much more succinct than us on the topics <laughs> of the day. <laughs> episodes drop every Monday on Pod. Uh, you can find the fresh episode right now on Fair Territory if you search it on Apple and Spotify, and you'll find it later today, video version on YouTube with all the money graphics on there. Play the music. Get us out of here. I need a nap. I might do it. I don't have time like right away, but I might do like a seven to eight nap and then watch the games. Something like that. Nap, no more than 20. Six to seven, whatever. No more than 20. Yeah, uh, I do no more than 30. Because I don't feel like I drop into it. So, but it's still the same concept. I know what you're talking about. Smack Look an espresso, up. go to sleep. You wake up, new man. Yep, I'm in. I'm doing it. Tomorrow, Kenny ball game. Ken what, he's tall. joining when I'm on? Ken's on oh, with you. Wait, again. Gone. Rowdy Telez yes. and Matt Olson of the Atlanta Braves. <sighs> Let's go. Let's have a day on Tuesday. I know. kratzy has got his championship game. Oh, yeah. Good luck. Is it state championship? Yeah. Not my final. Oh, good luck. Good luck, Kratzy. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blast Rowdy. I can't wait.
We'll see listen on the bus. And Locaine. And Lorenzo yeah. Kane. Oh, yeah. Star we'll Studies on the bus. Tuesday. I'll put it on the bus speaker. Please. please. Get ready, Ken. Comment in the chat. Me.